Hey, hey, we should be live now. Just trying to figure out some technical difficulties, but we should be okay sound-wise. Just having some trouble there. I see you guys going nuts in the chat there. Already waiting. Everyone's excited. Tony, thank you for the kind words about yesterday's stream. I appreciate it. And I see for some people it's very late for them. <laughs> <laughs> I just picture you laying in bed watching on like a tablet or phone. <laughs> uh, hopefully I don't put you to sleep. <clears throat> but uh yeah Your sultry this will be voice. yeah my <laughs> sultry voice but yeah this will be available later of course on youtube uh right after it ends if anyone's watching this if it said streamed 45 minutes ago or something like that youtube likes to have it very compressed and starts archiving the video and it might be very choppy and might be even missing parts uh for a couple hours after the stream so i recommend hey yanni what's going on but yeah, I recommend just waiting a bit. If it's if this streamed a couple hours ago, you should be fine. But sometimes it's not ready in HD right away. So that's just your warning. Uh, just waiting for everyone to kind of show up here. Yanni's getting paid to watch. I appreciate that. <laughs> Tell your work. Thank you. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. I'll, Elias, I know the excitement. I totally understand. Some of you guys that are watching this really late and don't want to wait. Uh, I'll only be playing the first chapter. I'm sure there'll be a few things spoiled, but as I've seen you, uh, seen you guys chatting, saying that it should be similar to some of the... I saw a bunch of Kickstarter prototype videos posted from before where they had like a prototype copy, and supposedly it'll be similar to that, but I, I haven't watched any of those myself even, so I, I don't know how close it is to that. Um, but yeah, so I figured since they're prototype copies, I know rules change and art changes and components change, and they always rework stuff during a Kickstarter, so I didn't want to watch any of that and kind of throw my rules understandings off or anything, so uh, all I've watched is uh, current print stuff and read the rule book um, myself. So we're going in here without a how to play video, so hopefully we do okay, but uh, I should know the rules pretty well, and Mel's read the rules, Yep. and we have some rules gurus in the chat, as I see, so we should be okay. Um, there's going to be a little bit of delay in playing on normal latency for YouTube, just for a better quality. Uh, so there will be like a 20 to 30 second delay, I think, on the chat. So just keep that in mind if you're posting something. It might take us, you know, a minute to respond uh, to you. But yeah. Um, William says he posted the link in the Facebook group. That's awesome. Thank you. So I was just saying thank that you. before going live that I'm so scrambled. I'm like <laughs> stressed trying to read all the rules and make sure everything's good and all the pieces are on the table that I, I, I forgot to uh, post on like Twitter that we're going live and stuff. But I posted earlier today, so it's fine. But yeah, thank you for posting on Facebook. That is super appreciative. That helps for sure. So we'll give it a, we'll give it like one more minute before we get going. I see there's 26-ish of you here. I appreciate that. Uh, and also sorry for doing this so late for those uh, in, in Eastern countries. It's just this is the evening. My wife works in the day. So uh, real life gets in the way sometimes. Um, but we do have this Friday. We might actually play Chapter 2 um, in the afternoon on Friday live. Possibly. Just keep an eye on Rob's Gaming Table. Uh, you'll see upcoming live streams on the page. Uh, I'll post it there. I'll also share it on Twitter, Facebook, um, and that stuff. So all the social links are down below if you want to follow those. Uh, and thank you to all our Patreon backers. Shout out to you guys for supporting the channel and those that donate on PayPal and whatnot. All those links are down below. Thank you for your support. I appreciate it. And just thank you everyone for watching. I appreciate you guys for even coming here to watch this. Um, and thank you to Noodle Nader for oh, subscribing right now. That one. What, sorry? My head is in the way of that one. Oh, <laughs> so Sorry, bad. Sorry, you couldn't see who that was. <laughs> Sorry, Noodle Nader, we blocked you. Blame Mel. It's her fault. No, I'm just kidding. I don't put the, myself there. <laughs> I know, I know. Let me fix that. Fix that for future streams. All right. Thank you. Thank you for subscribing. I appreciate it. So let's see. There's, they're similar story-wise, but I'm excited to see the new combat and diplomacy. Okay, perfect. Yes, I'm sure we'll get to some of that. Um, if it's any similar to the tutorial that we played through yesterday, it is some of the same, I think it's all the same locations to get us started. Um, so we should be okay, uh, cause we're doing the same start off at Kunat, uh, same menu, except for when we explore this time, we're going to actually be using the, um, the proper, uh, proper, uh, exploration journal. Oh man. Oh, do you use a separate book for... Uh, there's actually, like, in the back, there's, like, a little special tutorial section just oh, okay. just to stay away from spoilers. Cool. They kind of tell you to go to the back of the book. I didn't watch your video yet. I know. That's fine. <laughs> Real life gets in the way. I understand. But I'll hold you to it. You have to watch it later. No. You don't need to watch it after we play yeah, today. Yeah, true. Uh, so, yeah. This is, this is a good video to watch, too, because Mel has never played, never put her hands on any of this stuff. 
So I will be explaining stuff to her too while we play. So it may be a little more longer, a little more lax live stream. I figured if you guys wanted to just watch us play through quickly, this is probably not the video. We're going to take our time. I, I don't know how long the chapter is. Maybe it is short. Maybe it's super quick and this thing's done in an hour. Maybe it takes a couple because I, I want to like enjoy this. I want to teach Mel, get us started on our campaign. And if we do lose and maybe it, we're just trying to figure things out and we're, you know, we're testing the waters and maybe it doesn't go right for us and we fail. Maybe we just start a new campaign in video form later or another live stream later where we take it super serious after we go back to the drawing board. So those are the kind of things we do on the channel. Um, usually we play the first scenario a couple times before filming, but this time uh, I started looking at it. I did the whole setup earlier, had it all on the table, kind of walked through uh, the first couple turns just to make sure I understood all, and had all the components on the table so that I was reaching for everything. But uh, I haven't played the whole thing or know anything beyond the first couple turns. But... Um, but we have these cards uh, that we'll be showing. So let's get down to the table and let's get this thing started. Uh, if you guys are ready, I think you're ready. Okay. Um, so. I think you got another sub there that we. Oh, missed sorry. The uh, Johnny Eberly, thank you for subscribing. I appreciate that. And sorry if I miss any of you guys. We'll be focused on the game, so I, I obviously won't be shouting at everybody, but because uh, we kind of get, I get in the zone. Uh, but yeah. All right, ready, steady, play, spend about nine plus hours playing chapter one. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, no way. Nine plus hours? Was maybe, that like that, going it, through setup and everything no, too? Yeah, was that the prototype stuff? Maybe maybe the chapter was different. But they... Didn't hmm. they say... Ready, steady, it, play. That's those three guys that were playing, right? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe have three player, maybe it took a bit longer because maybe they had more to do or something because maybe the scale Maybe they stretches chatted it out. a lot? The chapter was designed two to three hours. Good luck. Okay. All right. Well, let's get into oh, it then. Okay. Uh, okay. So we got the map here. This little map they give each player to kind of look at to start. I think it's beautiful. Yeah, that's cool. It's like very like uh, feels old. Yeah. Which I, I don't know what to, how to describe that, but so in general they say kind of look at this at the start of the game to understand. We know Kunat will be down here. They leave for Camelot up here. This was stuff I learned from playing like the tutorial or whatever. Mm -hmm. But we'll start by reading our letters. I think. I think that's a good call. So I've chosen Maggot, and Maggot's board is here, and his combat deck's on the left, diplomacy deck's on the right. We've sleeved them uh, for easy shuffling. Uh, we'll set them up in a minute, but I'll read Maggot, and you're going to read Erev, who you've chosen in a second. Erev, Erev. So we're going to get started off proper here. Okay. Uh, so Maggot's a three, according to the letter, uh, is the number at the top. So you are a two. Two. So anything that says the lowest number player, whatever, lowest number character, you're going to win that tie. If it says, like, we can't decide on something, pick the highest number character ever, uh, that would be me. Okay. Unless, obviously, I die with Maggot and have to go to the box and get somebody else. That all throws, throw that all out the window. <laughs> okay. I loathe to write you, Maggot, yet if you've received this message, it means I am dead. Getting off on a happy note here. Awesome. <laughs> you were right. The sagas of old are true, and our island once belonged to a twisted immortal power. Arthur, the first of the kings, subdued this realm inch by inch. With his knights and his armies, he took the grail from the four dwellers and used it to bring seasons and cycles known from our world into this godless place. You druids always told us the menier in our village was created to immortalize this. But now I know the truth. It was created to keep these ancient powers out, to anchor this land to the world of mankind. Well, you all have failed. Now, the granaries stand empty, the spring won't come, and the menier in our village darkens by the day. I admit, I wanted to flay every druid until I discovered the reason, but Priestess Niente claims you had nothing to do with it. That's why I've gathered five of our best, of our best people... I'm leading them east to find help in Camelot before it's too late, before the land fragments and sinks into the weirdness. I did not ask you to join my retinue because, as much as I dislike druids, a man who betrayed even them seemed like a poor bet. Still, if we failed, I have no one else to trust. Rise, maggot. Do what you can, do what you can to save this land. This is my final wish. And this is from Lord Yvain. All right. Beautiful. So I'm a druid, and I caused some trouble for other druids, and yeah. What, what do you got there? What's Arev's letter tell him? Okay, it says, My friend, I know your secret. 
I realize you're no farmer and that you settled here to run from something. I know how it feels to be haunted by your past deeds, to leave your old life behind. I also know a fighting man when I see one, and I believe that I, sh that I should fail. You are the town's best, second best chance. Know that Avalon once belonged to twisted immortal powers. It was not a place for humans. Arthur, the one future king, subdued the realm inch by inch. He took the grail for the, uh, for the full, four dwellers and used it to bring the laws of the world into this godless place. People of the village believe their men here was raised to immortalize this. The truth is, it was created to keep the ancient powers out, to anchor Avalon in the world of mankind. Now the men here, men here go dark, the laws of nature unravel one by one. Lord Yvan secretly gathered five people, including me, and he leads us east to keep, or sorry, to seek help in Camelot. I wanted to take you to take you with us, but the others feared the misfortune that seemed to follow in your footsteps. But if you don't return, but if we don't return, it means our luck wasn't any better. Should this worst come to pass, I implore you, take up your arms once again and save our people. This is from Friel, the master huntsman of cannot is that how you say that i don't know how to say it but that's how i've been saying it okay <laughs> i would okay. like to hear how it's supposed to be said if somebody can email me an mp3 pronouncing that name that would be great or I'm some i just need it right now <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay do we need this again no no okay, here let me throw this stuff over to you actually if you yeah. can throw it on that table beside yeah. you there okay. uh but it, for those that don't know i'm rob of rob's gaming table of course <laughs> this is melanie my wife Hi. aka mel uh <laughs> if you haven't watched any of our previous playthrough series She's my partner in crime. We'll be mainly taking this on two-player, where she's playing a rev, and I'm playing Maggot. But if any either of them die, you can grab another character if we still have one left in the pool. But we also have a third player that likes to pop down and travel to our little city and sometimes play with us. If you haven't watched our other series, his name is Justin. We also have Kyle on the channel who plays with us quite often, plus others. There's others that pop in. But our hardcore campaign-type games, like Gloomhaven and whatnot, uh, we usually have Justin will pop in and this game does support a third player fourth player whatever showing up and jumping in our game uh, or even you putting your character on hold for example and then Justin could take a new character come in and you could show up later and bring your character who's been saved and come back and yeah. play um, and you just kind of like divvy up the secrets and that kind of stuff okay. uh, so Stay tuned. We may have other people come in. It might turn into a three-player uh, at some points. I may also play this solo at some point in the future, but primarily uh, I play. we play multiplayer on this channel. Uh, sometimes I play solo games in the afternoon when I'm uh, done editing and that kind of stuff. I'll play a game solo on the channel, sometimes in the afternoon, uh, Toronto, like Eastern time. Um, so stick around for that. I may play this solo if we're having a good time and pick a different character that we haven't seen and play through it that way. But that will come later. Also... Big spoiler warning, there will be spoiler stuff here. Some of you guys have been talking about in the chat. We are going to go into the exploration journal. We are going to explore some locations. We're going to see some encounters. We're going to grab some, possibly some secrets. We're going to get some items. We're going to see some events, do some quests, all this kind of stuff. So if you don't want to see any of that and you want to go in completely fresh, close the window now, run away. And come back. Come once back you want, later. Once you've played. <laughs> so what we do here, we usually play through entire campaigns, like we've done for Gloomhaven. We're still playing, like we beat that game, but we're still going to be playing more of it. So there's more to come on the channel of that. Um, but we've played through like the, the both campaigns of Lord of the Rings: Journeys of Middle Earth, Too Many Bones, Age of Tyranny. There's other games we play through that I can't even think of, Zombicides and and all this stuff. But we always play through it, and you have to understand there's spoilers. We don't expect you to watch along with us. We won't be doing them all live, that's for sure, but they will be on YouTube, and the idea is we do this so that it's kind of archived, and then we can create a discussion later when you guys play Chapter 2, Chapter 3, and beyond, or try the same characters we tried. Come back and watch it later. Sometimes I do it, and that's why I do these videos where I am curious. I play Scenario 7 of a certain game, and I want to see, how did somebody else solve this? I'm curious. And I'll go out, find the video on YouTube, and watch it later down the road, months, years after it's been filmed. So don't feel like you have to follow along with us live or as we post it. No offense, there is spoilers. We're not posting this to try to spoil the game and ruin it for anybody. So watch at your own risk. You've been warned. You've been warned. We just got it now. We're playing it now. We're not trying to get it out there to spoil it for anybody. That's not what we're trying to do, okay? So that's your warning. All right. <laughs> Tony, 170 hours into it. 
Man, that's, yeah, I feel like that's a week. Yeah, we definitely played about that much, if not more. And and we didn't even film all the Gloomhaven. We played a lot. We played not on camera, and yeah, so ones we played on camera, and they lot we uh, <laughs> lost the footage. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sometimes it wasn't the greatest footage, so we just played the scenario again later and posted it and stuff like that. So, anyways, enough of that. Let's get to Tainted Grail, the Fall of Avalon. You've all been waiting for it. Uh, I'm starting to learn day by day that this game is way more hyped than I ever knew. And when I asked for a review copy of this game, I did not know how huge the Kickstarter was. All I saw was a message that somebody said that watches the channel and said, Hey, check out this game based on the stuff you play, based on what your fans like. You should check out Tainted Grail because I was looking for other games to play on the channel. I never heard of it. I know that upset some people, but I didn't. I've heard of a lot of Wake and Realms games, but this one I didn't even know about. And I went looking and I watched some video, I read about it, I grabbed the rule PDF and I started looking at it. I know I've said this story before, but I didn't know. But as the days pass and as people keep letting me know, this game is huge. So I went and looked back at the Kickstarter. I went and watched reviews. I went and read up more on the game and kind of some of the updates through the Kickstarter. And this game, I can see why it is so hyped and so huge. And I'm sorry, I didn't know when I asked for it that I was going to get myself in this kind of trouble. But I'm excited to play this game and I'm glad I got it. And you guys are awesome and I appreciate being here. Anyways, enough. Everyone should be here now. Let's get into it. All right. So, first things first, we are going to go through the character setup. We're just going to go to the PDF. We're going to go to the rules. We're going to do it. Make sure we have everything down. I should be okay not to use the rules, but I just want to make sure we don't miss anything. So, if anyone's watching this as they're setting up their first game and maybe wants to see how it's set up. I know this isn't a rules video, but uh, at least you guys can see this to help you get going quicker. So first we choose our character. We did that. So talked, we, already, we already looked at all the characters ahead of time uh, and we decided to play these ones. So we are going to set up our starting energy and our starting health, which we do with the T marker. So you look at the red chevrons, you slap in your red cubes for your terror, your energy, and the health is the T bar. Uh, next, we're going to go with our starting attributes and how you do that, of course, you flip over the cool little cardboard layer there and look at the other side and it's going to tell you where you're going to put your combat attributes, which are on the left, like aggression, courage, and practicality, which I am lacking with Maggot. He seems a little more diplomatic because he has one caution and two spirituality, but he has no empathy. I, I have only one one of things you have two of things oh. yeah just spirituality but okay. but see i'm, I'm empty and empathy oh, and practicality okay. so okay. i'm gonna have trouble when keys come up on cards that have those symbols yeah. I, I can't use that to play bonuses um so that's something i'm gonna be looking to get is some empathy possibly or some practicality just so i have at least something in that stat to maybe make cards better or when i'm spending experience later i may use uh that experience to put cards in my deck that work with the attributes i have and toss out ones that don't to kind of mold my place off, I want to focus on a few attributes. You totally can do that, is my understanding. Uh, the other thing is, you got to grab your resources. So I get two food. Oh, yeah. And two magic for Maggot. And what do you get over there for resources? I get two food, one wealth, and one magic. Nice. Oh, magic is this one. And I have one. No, 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 no. No, it's not. Uh, so how it works, it's the same. It's just kind of highlighting oh. magic with a cool little blue background. Oh, okay. Those purple cubes, aka blue cubes, are literally only to represent five reds. That's all they're for. Oh. They're slightly bigger. They're, they're meant to represent five reds because obviously you can only fit like six in these little boxes. So if you go up to like seven or eight, yeah. you, you're not going to pile it up. You're just going to take out five and put in one of those purples. Oh, okay. Okay. Yep. Thank you. There you go. <laughs> And today you learn something. All right. Learn something new every play. All right. I don't remember reading that at all in the book. All right. <laughs> I think I was too focused on the main rules. Yeah, yeah. Like, You're like, ah, purple cubes, cubes were, whatever. I was like, ah, whatever. Pandemic <laughs> cubes? Sure, whatever. <laughs> Viruses okay. outbreaking? Yeah, whatever. All right. <laughs> so two food, one wealth, one magic. Okay. All right. So uh, starting stats are set up. All yes. right. So the next thing, which I've pre-done because I don't want to take forever... Uh, there's this whole set aside your 80 combat and diplomacy cards that match your color of your character tray. So for Maggot, there are brown cards. There is a 25 card combat deck and a 25 card diplomacy deck that are basic and advanced cards. Then you have a 15 card character specific deck for both diplomacy and combat. You grab just the first 15 basic cards and you slap them into a deck, shuffle them up, which I've shuffled, I'm pretty sure you might want to just quickly do a little 
mass shuffle there, but or shuffle right before you do a combat or whatever or a diplomacy. Mm -hmm. But uh, to the side, I've put over there for you also, uh, there's these little dividers to separate your combat advancement pool and your diplomacy advancement pool. Oh, okay. So these are shuffled. I've shuffled yours. I've shuffled mine. Okay. But I'll, I'll show you here just so you understand when and if we go to do this. If you have the experience, you can spend two experience to get better either diplomacy cards or combat cards. And how that works is you'll have this little side deck. Picture Gloomhaven in a little cardboard box. Mm -hmm. You pull out, okay, here's my cards. They've reached level whatever. And this doesn't work exactly like that. What you do is you spend three experience. Or two, sorry, two experience, right? Let's double check on our little cool reference sheets here uh, on this side. So here it states, two XP, draw three combat cards or diplomacy cards from your advancement pool, choose one, put the rest back, and shuffle the pool, okay? So it's always mixing up. So you literally take three, if I want to upgrade my diplomacy, oh. I flip them over, I look, I kind of look at what's in my deck, and I take one. That's it, I take one at the end of day if I'm upgrading. Then yeah. I shuffle these back, okay? Mm -hmm. And then what you do is there's a step at end of day after you purchase upgrades, you then can modify your deck. So I have 15 cards as the minimum, and that's what I have to have. I can sleeve this, throw it in, or I can sleeve it, throw it in, and take something out. Right. And I can stay at 15 if I want, but it help, or I just take this and put it to the side and, and build a little side pool that at any time I can switch up. So later I might find, oh, maybe I do need that card back or that I took out or whatever. So you build a little side pool of cards that you purchased. And if you have a little side pool of cards, let's say three cards, you can put all three of those in in one of the phases? You don't have yes. to do one at a time? Yes, end of every day you okay. can modify your deck. Okay, I'm taking out and putting in however yes. many you'd like. Yes, just have to be at 15 minimum. Okay. Uh, so. Experience is tracked with what, just on a paper? Uh, right here. It's another oh. little resource. Right, I need okay. that. Okay, yep, yep, yep. Same with that. reputation, wealth. And food. We okay. can trade food and wealth at any time as long as we're not in the middle of an encounter or an action yep. or exploring, I think. But uh, you can trade food and wealth at any time. You can't trade rep or aka reputation. You can't trade experience. And I don't think you can trade magic either. But you okay. can spend magic uh, or food or whatever to help somebody in your party to spend on an action. And yes, you can do it on combat cards too. Yeah, I like to and pay for you. Yes, kind of idea. as long as we're together in a party okay. at the same location, I guess. Okay. Uh, so, so these cards are off to the side. We'll only deal with these if we spend experience to upgrade our combat and diplomacy decks. Okay. Okay. And I shuffled mine. Do you need me to shuffle yours? Uh, no, I'm good. I, oh, I, yeah, whatever. I'll shuffle it later when I go to actually purchase from it. But okay. I did shuffle it earlier. I just, uh, but just looking at a couple cards there, I might have, yeah, but I didn't really look at what they were, but all right. Create your 15 card, yep, we did that. Okay, we can skip over all that. Create your 25 card, we just talked about all that. Uh, place your flip this. character tile on the tray, yes. All of that text just for flip this thing up uh, the other way. So, Maggot's ability is meditation. His positive action is two energy to gain one magic up to four magic this way, okay? Then I have Recovering Addict is my negative. When dreaming, toss a dial. Skull side, I would only read the nightmare instead if available. So basically like 50-50 chance of me actually seeing a dream when I go to try to rest at a place with a dream. It's going to be super annoying. I can feel it already. But uh, yeah, that's the guy I picked because I wanted magic. As I said yesterday on the stream, I want the magic guy. You told me it was maggot. So here I am. So I blame you guys <laughs> if, if that tanks us. No, I'm just joking. All right. Let's see what's the chat saying. It's really hard to pick a character before you've actually played the game. Uh, yeah. That's what I found. Yeah, that's why I made like little notes for you. Like, yeah. here's here's what you should look at based on me playing the tutorial. These are what the kind of stats and what you should look at. And not having something is kind of a big deal. Not having a certain attribute. But I mean, you could always buy something in an attribute. But obviously costs change. And we'll talk mm -hmm. about that when we go to do that. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we did read our character's introductory letter. We already did that ahead of time. And take your adventure map. We already looked at that adventure map. So that's literally a step in there. We're good. All right. World setup. Here we go. Uh, all right. After all players have set up their characters, follow the steps below. Set the starting location. The starting location for the Fall of Avalon is location card 101. Kunat Farm Hold. You can dream there. It's a gr nice settlement because it's our home. And a menier can be activated here. And the ability on it is one energy can be spent to do this action for chores for the townsfolk. You gain one reputation, and this is once per day. 
So what you can do to signify the once per day, and I believe it's once per day for all of us, for the whole bunch of players, mm -hmm. you can only help the townsfolk once. You throw a little time token on there. And then at the whole step at the start of the day, when you go remove time tokens, you would take that off. Yeah. But that's just to show you it's been used. So I'm pretty sure if I go there and, and help them and leave on the same day, you can't come over and do the same thing. Yeah, that I'm makes sense. I'm pretty sure that's how when it says once per day. Yeah. It's for all of us. It's for the location, not for each of each character. Yeah, that's what I understood. Uh, all right. And then the flavor text on it is, uh, its history is as vast as its graveyard, its future as empty as its houses. All right. So... Uh, then once it wants us to do, place starting locations in the middle of your play space. Place all character models you are starting the campaign with here. And then it talks about a bunch if you have expansions later. Okay. Okay. So place one men here model on the starting location and put the dial in the slot under this menu. Turn the dial so it shows the following number. Eight for one player, seven for two. So uh, do you have a preference for which one of these beautiful men here's you would like to be the one that keeps our homeland lit this one all right the one with the tied up hands where do you does it matter uh like does it matter where you cover? i don't know it it's a little frustrating to me that it covers up stuff on the card because yeah. the card's so beautiful and i like the little iconography on it and like the name and the numbers and all that yeah but i've just been like kind of throwing it in the corner i don't know and where's good for camera i guess too. it does they're yeah. not gonna be able to see the number in it that's the other thing okay uh oh i don't know where i put those dice anyways okay don't worry we won't, we won't even put this playthrough We'll just describe out loud what the what we're setting the day to on the men here so that they know. But okay. if you see there, you tell me what numbers are on that thing. You can't because it's not. Five. I know, but it's not that clear because it's the sun dropped stuff too. Does I should have painted it, but I just didn't have time yet today. Okay. But I might try to paint like the numbers yellow. But there is a lot of these dials, uh, so yeah, and some of them you're just tossing like a coin or putting time markers on them. So. We'll see when we get there. But okay. either way, we'll just say it out loud as we tick down a menu. We'll just sure. just we'll get in the habit of at the start of the day changing this one to six, this one to seven, whatever, or five okay. and four. Um, it looks awesome on the table, but I'm only talking from video point of view. I whenever I see a board game, automatically I start picturing me watching it ten feet up in the air from the camera angle, like not ten feet, but you know what I mean. You guys sitting on your couch. Or looking at your phone or whatever. Uh, so it's like when things aren't don't pop off the table, it's uh, a little rough. So you need one of those. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> <Woo -hoo. laughs> All right. So uh, we're gonna set it to seven, right? Yep. Is what it said. Okay. So we're just gonna slide that in there like so, and you'll see the flat edge is coming out. So it's it's pretty good. I just usually pull it out a little bit, turn it to the next little flat side, and whatever. You just sort of remember to kind of tilt the menu back so. It does. It, it likes to slide like this very slippery surface yeah. inside. So uh, every time I like pick one up to like move something, it would like come out. But okay, um, we should be good. I'll be gentle. All right. Okay, many are set. Okay. Um, build the starting section of the map. Okay, here's a question I have. So I looked through the rules uh, after this question popped in. I don't know if either of you guys know in the chat, but right now it's telling us to build this. So we have the menu, we just set it up, and it's gonna kind of light these sections beside us. And I know when you move to a location, you'll automatically expand the map as long as it's within range of the menu. So if I move north, I would then place the locations to the right and left of it. But if I'm on a place and I activate a menu here, do automatically the places now adjacent to the, the location I'm standing on, if it's on the edge of the map, do those do those cards appear? Like, do the, does the light kind of spread to them? Or do I have to leave that location and come back to that location to then expand the map? Because it, it supposedly only happens when you enter a new location. But what if you activate them in here? I couldn't really find that in the rules, and I wasn't sure. I'm assuming no, since it's not in the rules that I could find. But if you guys know, let me know in the chat. I'd just be curious what, what your thoughts are on that. Um, but I wanted to look a little, a little closer. I looked in the FAQ, didn't find anything about it, but I might just be crazy and miss something in the rules. Okay, so we're gonna connect them. Uh, so 101 is on the bottom of this, so it's the Hunter's Grove. This is going north. Uh, you can dream there, but it's not a settlement, and there's no men here here. Uh, it has an action, spend two energy to gather food. You'd gain two food and you draw a green encounter, and generally the green encounter deck could get us food also. So you're like hunting animals and that kind of stuff. Okay. Uh, in ages past, only the druids were allowed into the grove for good reason. That is now forgotten. All right, so that's the Hunter's Grove to the north. Okay. 
right, let's throw this down here. All right, uh, whoops, okay. Uh, so next is, uh, let's just quickly, 101, we got the Warrior Fair on the left side here, on the west. Four energy, uh, combat trial, lose one health, gain one experience once per day. With mm -hmm. everything that has happened on the island, skilled warriors have become a currency of their own. So you can go there and do some combat to try to uh, gain some experience. Kind of get good. Uh, it expands when you light a men here, but I'll double check. It's not explicit in the rules. We'll add it to the FAQ. Yeah, I was going to say that, Tony, but I wasn't sure if you guys knew it was in the rules and I just missed it. I like re-looked at it today earlier. I made like some notes of questions I had after reading for the second or third time. And then I read the FAQ and then I read your unofficial, the unofficial FAQ in Board Game Geek. And all the questions I had were answered when I re-looked in the rules and kind of searched for them. It made sense, but that was the one where I was like, I couldn't sign anything explicitly, but... It seems kind of dumb to have to like leave a location and come back to just expand the map when you light a men here that's on the edge. So that, that makes sense. It just seems like that's what would happen when you light a new one. Kind of the light would spread across the land. So anyways. <laughs> uh, but yeah. So we'll throw a uh, charred conclave to the right here. You can dream there. Okay. Uh, so no dreaming here. Uh, so you could rest here is my understanding. But you don't have a dream sequence in the book. Okay. When you go to this one, you draw a gray encounter when you enter this location. So it happens right away. Unless there was a guardian on top of it, you'd do that first. Uh, the wind that caresses the long grass of this desolate highland also carries the smell of burnt flesh. Yum, yum, yum. Hmm. All happy and cheery here in the land of Avalon. All right. And next is the Forlorn Swords, 105. You can rest there. Some cool looking That's sword cool. art there. Yeah, that is cool. Uh, you can spend one energy here to go to the smith's shop, pay one wealth, and draw a craftable item. Oh. Sensing their own end, four, four dwellers ordered giants to push humans into the sea, but the giants abandoned their weapons here. <laughs> That's cool. All right. Uh, so, yeah. All right. I think we're good. Uh, okay. We've set up all what's there. I'll put these back on our location deck. Uh, oh, okay. During the Kickstarter, there's a rule. Diane Mountford. You rules expert on this game too? Awesome. <laughs> I appreciate you being here to help us. Great. And I appreciate all your rules, comments on the other Too Many Bones, Cloud Spire stuff. I'm pretty sure on both those games you were commenting. But yeah, it's some helpful helpful comments on our, on our videos in the past. Thank you. Uh, take all encounters and sort them by color into four piles. Each pile should contain 31 cards. Uh, okay. So the encounter cards. We have them set up. Uh, but we'll, we'll, I have them set up to the side. So you set up the encounter decks. But then when we do the chapter setup, you actually pull cards out of that those encounter decks to build your chapter-specific uh, encounter deck. So we'll, we'll show that here when we, when we do that. So we have a fresh save sheet already. We've got our help cards down here. Mm -hmm. Optional, pick your chronicler. Whatever. I'll be the chronicler, sure. <laughs> uh, but we'll be loose with it. And I'll make her read some stuff when my eyes start uh, getting tired after reading lots of text. But we'll see. Or I start losing my voice later. We'll see if that happens. <laughs> Uh, so set up the first chapter. All right, here we go. The good stuff starting here. Okay, so chapter set up. So you oh. get this little uh, chapter cards, and they explain on the front how to set them up, and then on the back. So we grab oh. chapter one, set up front. And that's very cool. I was like, man, are we just drawing randomly from these encounter decks? This seems pretty lazy. How do you know if stuff's hard or weak? I did not know about these cards. And then when I realized, I was like, ah, it all makes sense now. <laughs> all right. So we are going to prepare the event deck. So we find all parts of chapter one and stack them from six bottom to one top. Okay. So I put those on the top here just quickly so I can grab them. So you'll see how it's really cool. You don't even have to turn them over, which I was super impressed by that on the back, the backs are different and explain what chapter and what number. So like there is no chance you're like, looking for little text on the bottom of cards and like and see spoiling yeah and spoiling yeah. stuff like some games they would just cheap out and have the same back on all of them and then you have to kind of read the fronts and like cover stuff with your hand so chapter one part one two three four five six okay one to six as instructed uh this will be our event deck which i will put maybe here for now I'll try to figure out how we're going to lay out things here but uh Let's see here. Chat saying, I agree with Tony. Bordering locations, not on diagonals, to a newly laid men here would be added to the map. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. And no worries, Stan. No worries. I'm just messing with you. 
But uh, the rules are online and a nice high quality PDF popped up the other day, which I super appreciate. And that's what we have on screen uh, when we're jumping back and forth. So we'll, we'll see the rules in here as we need to look stuff up too. We'll, we'll go right to the source. Uh, all right. So hint, always take extra care when building the event deck and double check that it's stacked correctly. Part one at the top and the rest in ascending order, which we just did. Yep. Hint, some event cards will modify the event deck. For example, by adding random events to the top of it. Additionally, the exploration journal sometimes asks you to resolve a specific part of the chapter. In such case, Take that specific card from the deck and resolve it without altering the rest of the pile. Now follow the instructions on the back of the card. So we flip it over. Build your initial four encounter decks, gray, green, purple, and blue. For one player, use all cards with one difficulty. For two to four players, use all cards with two, uh, one and two difficulty. So that's what we're gonna do. So we'll walk through that right now. So what you do, so let's grab blue for example. We're gonna flip it over and we're gonna just look in the top left corner and grab everything with two difficulty and one difficulty, and I don't know. You want to pass a pile, and I'll yep. do one pile, yep. or two? Yep, I'll give you gray and green. And all the ones are here. All right. Okay, I'll shuffle that in a second, and I'll do the same thing for purple. Okay, there's all the twos. Kind of hold it farther away, so, and all the ones, okay. So this is gonna be our encounter deck for uh, this chapter. So obviously it can change based on how the game's progressing. Might have us put three and four difficulty creatures in. Maybe it'll tell you to pick specific ones. I, I don't know. I don't know how it differ, differentiates it, but uh, I'm sure it just maybe maybe gets smaller. Maybe sometimes we'll just stick all the fours in there by the time you get to the end. I, I don't know, but that's a cool way to scale difficulty. All right. And it just smells ripe for expansions. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how you're putting it, but that one's ready. Oh, you'll know how it's gonna go together in one second. I like this little cool part, how it's like, it kind of connects in the corner. Love all the art on all these cards. Yeah, it's very dark and depressing, uh, which is awesome. Okay, let's see on camera, I'll throw this over here. Blue here, green, shuffle or not shuffle. Uh, yep. Oh, yeah, this was you. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Looks Kay. good. Looks good. Cut. Mm -hmm. and oh, cool. Boom. Does it kind of go together? All right. Um, so, next, shuffle the decks. This is your first game. Place a matching your first encounter card on top of each encounter deck. So, what I'm going to do for that. I played yesterday, you guys all know that was my first like tutorial game, and it gives you these in the tutorial which we saw yesterday. Because you have not played yet, for the first diplomacy we get, which is the blue deck, and for the first whatever other encounter, we'll do the your first encounter, but that's it. So whichever one of these other three decks happens first, we'll do that. And the reason why is because on it explains like all the oh, rules okay, okay. and they're easier. I believe they're just like the easiest of easy. So that way we don't flip something hard and we get smashed right away. Right. Cause I want to teach you the combat and I want you to be able to make mistakes in combat and diplomacy and walk through it and help make decisions. Even if it's me doing it, I want us to walk through together and kind of learn together. Also for you watching at home, of course. Um, so I'll throw these on top for now, but as soon as we do, uh, one diplomacy and one combat, I'll take the rest away. Okay. But for now, I'll just throw them on there. It says if it's your first game, which this is our first game technically, but obviously I played the tutorial yesterday, so I kind of know what those are, but just for the first uh, interaction today. Okay. You are now ready to start Chapter 1, The Fall of Avalon. As your first action of the game, try exploring your starting location. Write that down. Just joking. All right. Remember to read the introduction of the exploration journal before you explore the first time, which we read before starting. Mm -hmm. That's that first couple pages in the exploration journal. Mm -hmm. Okay, now discard this card and reveal the top card of the event deck. Are you ready? I'm ready. Are you sure? 
Yeah. We can stop the stream right now if you're not ready. <laughs> now right. they'll riot. Yeah, yeah. They've been okay. waiting so long for this. <laughs> yeah, never mind. Let's play this later. Let's go. All right. Okay. First card of the event deck. Okay. Final, final, final spoiler warning. All right, we're good. Okay. So we got Ancient Knowledge. So it's a quest card. You can tell it's got this little locky red symbol here. Uh, it reminds you on the front that this is Chapter 1, Card 1 okay. on the front on this side too. So you don't need to flip it over if you're looking for it or something. Uh, place this card on top of the active quest pile. So we'll say this is our active quest pile. Okay. Um, and so you could have multiple quests going at a time. So they'll be in your little pile. So you, you'll sometimes have to take them and look through them and kind of check what's going on, is my understanding. So we'll read here some flavor text. This okay. time is short. The guardian menu here that has been protecting your town since the ancient days is about to go dark. Rumor has it that there's a secret druidic ritual that may help you rekindle the menus. You must explore the location surrounding Kunat to find it. So the quest, this is the important part. Okay. Earn a Men Here's Rights secret card. Okay. Mm -hmm. Men Here's Rights secret card we need. To do so, you'll have to explore the location surrounding Kunat. So surrounding 101. So anything around it is game. We got to hunt and find the secret card Men Here Rights. Okay. Success would be as soon as we have Men Here Rights, we resolve the chapter one, part five card. So we'll do that when we get success. We'll read the rest of that. So we'll skip the rest there. Hint. If this is your first game, try to return to Kanaat at the end of the, this day and spend a night there to read the dream, as dreams often contain hints. This is Kanaat. Kanaat is the dead center. You will not forget this is our home farmland. This is the good settlement on the board. You need to remember this is Kanaat because things are going to obviously keep referring to it. If it's anything like the tutorial, Kanaat was dropped multiple times in the story yeah. as this is where they gathered, this is where they left from. So it's an important piece to the story for sure. Okay, so saying to return here to go to sleep. It's saying, try return to Kanaat at the end of this day and spend a night there to read the dream, as dreams often contain hints. So it's obviously going to give us a hint to go. So we probably should do that. And maybe I don't need to do it because I toss a dial and it could read the nightmare. So I might not be the best one to do it. But if we're both there, you get to read the dream automatically. And then you you would have to read the nightmare if you flip? I, I guess. Yeah, We I don't know. I don't know how the resting two people resting together on the same place is, works, but... I think as long, as long as one of us, we go read it. But I'll flip and, and we'll see, I guess. Okay. I don't know. Okay. We'll, maybe I'll just try not to be on that location with you and, and we'll see what happens. Okay. All right. So that's interactive quest pile. All right. Oh, oh no. Uh, where's my mouse? Not ready. <laughs> Looking forward to some maggot nightmares. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Rob, watch a couple of videos on shuffling methods. It'll make your life easier. <laughs> no, uh, for this, for this, I'm purposely shuffling them like a gentle baby and trying to be very, like, not mashing the cards together at all or bending the cards at all because I don't have sleeves on everything. And the cards are an okay thickness. They're not the best. And the art is so thick on them and, like, it's, it's thick and glossy that I'm worried it's going to like kind of chip at the edges. I've seen cards like this after you mash them together, it will start like ripping and chipping. So I don't want to sleeve everything for glare purposes on video. And you've probably, if you've seen any of my other videos on this channel, you know, like if I don't have sleeves on it, I will gently just kind of like, I, I'm softly like wiggling them together. You just mixed up in there. You put that one on top. Oh yeah. I'll fix that. But I was just demoing. Oh, okay. So yeah, I just kind of like quickly shuffle it together after doing a pile shuffle when I don't have sleeves on the cards and I don't want to wreck them. Uh, yeah, and I, I want them to stay looking pretty on video. Yeah, because too, if you do start marking them up, then you'll know. Yeah, and I don't want to have marked cards either in a game that's all about flipping over surprises and stuff. Yeah. So, yes, that is my defense to my, yes, crappy shuffling. I totally agree it is garbage. <laughs> uh, but when I have sleeves on it, then I'll just be kind of like, you know, jamming it in there like, like so and, you know, whatever. But I hate riffle shuffling and bending cards and stuff, so I will not be doing that. So mock me if you will. All right. Okay. Uh, all right. So we got our first quest. Mm -hmm. And we're going to the start of our first day, I think. Let's see. Uh, just double check. Chapter one setup. Yep. All right. Uh, blah, 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 blah. We know all about the random deck, so we'll deal with that when that comes up. Uh, the first day of your journey has started. Go to the playing the game section in this rule book and begin your journey. Hint, exploring your home location is a good first step that will let you check what options are available here. Hint, 
For the first several in-game days, keep your Order of the Day card handy and perform the listed steps one by one. A new player can easily forget about important actions such as reducing the dial or revealing a new event card at the start of each day. Then it talks about the Chronicler. Okay, and one thing I do want to read, uh, so we'll skip this, but there's one section I want to just discuss with you, Mel, just to make sure, and I want to kind of read it again for myself. Uh, it's on page 13. Let me scroll over maybe so I can see the page numbers. All right, general game tips. Okay, okay. I know you read over this, but we'll just have a refresher now that we're at the table and we have everything out. Explore around. Most valuable finds and most storylines are only available through exploration. Sometimes you'll need to explore the same place multiple times. Try to always keep enough food and resources for the next couple of days. And inspect all men here on revealed locations, which does not cost any energy to do that. You just have to be on the location. Then you flip it over and we can look at the back and on the bottom we can see it. And if we don't want to flip it over because stuff is on it, we can always look at the men here section in the uh, exploration journal, okay? Um, but it's saying an, any encounter gone are awry or a bad decision may set you back a day or two. So they're saying make sure you know what's needed to activate it, how much energy, health, magic, whatever else is involved in activating it. Make sure you're planning from day one when you start. We are saving up to get this so we can activate it because okay. once it gets down to one or zero days left, it's like we need to have that stuff. So if we have on day four and we think, yeah, we'll get some magic later eventually, before you know it, something could really set us back where we're like, oh, crap. Now we don't have time to get that stuff. Right. So you need to be thinking ahead. Okay. 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 And resolving the encounters or exploring dangerous locations together can really boost your odds. On the other hand, the more of you there are, the quicker you need to move. Parting ways may sometimes be necessary to cover more ground. Just like we know from playing Lord of the Rings, Dreams of Middle Earth, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. sometimes you can stick together and be really powerful, but sometimes you need to, if you do that, you're going to lose because you need to get stuff done. Right. Okay? Yep. Uh, same thing with Mansion of the Madness, Second Edition. Same mm -hmm, stuff's mm -hmm. in that game. S similar. This game feels a lot similar to both those games. Uh, remember that characters in the same location can assist each other, helping them pay any cost. Okay? Mm -hmm. So if I'm having trouble and I'm like, man, I, I want to help these guys, but I can't, you can pay the energy for me and I can get the one rep. Okay. That's my understanding. Okay. All right. Let's just check the chat one more time before we go here. Uh, maybe you always read one dream per character. Good question. Or is it per relevant location? This has become clear. To, this hasn't become clear to me either. <laughs> oh man, I started another question now. <laughs> this is live. <laughs> if this is live, how on earth do you have the option to play this at two times speed? I'm so confused. <laughs> Oh man! Do you want to watch it on two times I'm speed? I'm gonna or? try to talk really slow for you, so you can put it at two times speed. Uh, it may be an exploration journal. We may need to add an FAQ. Okay, perfect. Uh, men here section in the journal that was new to me. Weeks, weeks. Yeah, so we'll just look at 101 here, just so we see quickly. I'll just kind of, I mean, we'll explore it in a sec anyway. But the men here section is always after the dream and nightmare section in the end of, of one that has a men here. So you can always quickly flip to there if you need to uh, to read about it. Okay. Okay. So we're good? We are starting day one. Okay. So start of the day. We remove the expired men here and discard locations that are out of men here range. Not existing. Reduce all time and men here dials. Remove time tokens. Well, all we have is one men here dial. No time tokens. So we're going to go down to six. That's crazy. You don't even skip it day one. Don't get started on that. That is something that, as people have asked, is an FAQ. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, like most games. No. Yeah. But the reason why they want, it says in the rule book specifically, they wanted to keep the rules simple mm -hmm. so that every start of day was always the same. Not on the first start of the day, you skip this because then what happens is people forget when they're on the second day to do that because it's not something they've done every time they sit down at the table. Right, it's not a routine. For this okay. way, it drills it into your brain. It's very straightforward. There's no way you're forgetting it. You're checking it every single time. Okay. So they purposely tell you to set the dial to nine, minus one for each player. So you're starting at eight, and then you'll just tick it down as you go. Okay. And eventually when you get to zero, you tick it down to zero, but it doesn't leave yet until the next yeah, round. So you have that extra turn. It's not like you lose that day. Okay. All right. Reveal the next event card. Uh, one second. 
when it was telling us to do that event card, I think it was part of the initial campaign setup, but I think we do a new event card right now. But I just wanna make sure I didn't goof that up. And I just wanna see it tell me that it wasn't being crazy. It says the first day of your journey has started. Yeah, maybe I was just crazy. Go to play the game section in the rule book and begin your journey. So what is... Yeah, so sorry. We'll just do that. I don't think we flip another one right now. But why did I do that then? Order of the day? Nope. Oh. But I thought in here it tells you to flip your first one and get started. You need an event for today, I believe. Yeah, I just want to okay. set up the first chapter. Chapter one, setup card and follow its instructions. Starting with the front, build the deck. Then take out all random event cards, shuffle them and place them on the side of your play, which I did already. The event cards will sometimes ask you to put a certain number. When asked to draw an event, you always draw a deck, never from the random event pile. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know why I flipped that. I don't see it. Do you see it? Mm -mm. Yeah, let me see. Just want to make sure. Set up the first chapter. Okay, we did that. Take all random events. Yeah, I don't see anywhere that says. I think maybe I just thought that because of the way I was reading it. So we do chapter one, set up front. First day of your journey started, go to the play in the game section of this rule book. Yeah, okay, no, we'll just do that as our first one. Right, didn't tell us. Oh, you know where it told us on the setup card? Oh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, it told us on the setup card, right? You're now ready to start chapter one, Fall of Avalon is your first action of the game. Try exploring, remember to read, uh, shuffle the decks. Maybe not. I don't remember you saying that, but that doesn't mean that you didn't. <laughs> Part of chapter one, set up instructions. Prepare the event decks. Find all chapter one, stack from one to six. Always take extra killer and building the event deck. Double check the stack correctly. Hint, some events will modify the event deck. For example, blah, blah, blah. just tells you about taking a card out of the deck. Now follow the instructions on the back. So build your decks, shuffle the decks. If it's your first game, place the first encounters on top. Now you're ready to start chapter one, The Fall of Avalon. As your first action of the game, try exploring your starting location. Remember to read the introduction of the exploration journal before you explore for the first time. Now discard the card and reveal the top card of the event deck. Hmm. Hmm. I'm very worried now that you're not supposed to mess with the deck and maybe I've messed it up. But I feel like something told me to flip that. Something told you to flip what? This, our first event. Something said it for sure, because I wouldn't have flipped that. Anyways, let's do a new one. Oh, I think this... Pass me that card again that you just read. Yeah. Did I miss something? Yeah. Now discard this card and reveal the top oh, card. Oh, thank you. I, yeah, you just missed a word. I'm an idiot. <laughs> I knew it. I just want to make sure. Okay, so we're good. Thank you, chat, for also telling me I'm, I missed mm -hmm. it, and I'm good. Okay. So it's been a long day. Yes. Uh, so we're doing Exodus. Homeless vagabonds roam the roads and trials. Many hail from fishing villages further west. Where the last men here went dark weeks ago... Through malformed and sick, they are the lucky ones. Oh, though malformed and sick, they are the lucky ones. Their tails chill you to the bone. Is this the fate that awaits your land? Help the refugees. Each player may spend one wealth or one food to gain one rep and one experience. One wealth or one food. Do we do that right now? Yeah. To gain one rep and one experience. Yeah, I'll do that. I'll spend a food and I'll gain a rep and experience. How easy do you think it is to get wealth? 
Uh, I don't know. We didn't. I didn't see. Oh, right. Here. Oh no, let's no, pay, pay one well. No idea. No idea, eh? No idea. <laughs> Nothing on there tells me any way to get wealth. Okay, well, there is ways to get food. Okay, I'll pay a food as well. And I gain... Yeah, there's ways to get food. That's why I saw the gathering yeah. food, right? So, so when it said gain one reputation one and one reputation experience? reputation and one experience, yes. Okay. So place five, minus one per player. So that's three, right? Additional random events on the top of the event deck. So we're doing three random events. Okay. So I'm just going to quickly do another little crappy shuffle for you. <laughs> One, two, three. Okay. Oh, okay, okay. Yep. Cool. So, all right. Uh, then discard this card. Hint, there are several ways to gather food or heal around your starting location. You may need to find them, though. Okay. So this one's been discarded. Uh, so we'll put our event discard pile right here okay okay I mean... <laughs> okay now they do <laughs> yeah <laughs> when do the random events come in <laughs> yeah sorry sorry about the delay uh all right <laughs> now okay so let's start let's move our guardians nope pick active item and secret cards don't have any yet now okay. we start doing some actions okay you go first sure well i'm down to one food I know that's what I need to rest at the end of today to gain a health and lose a terror. I don't have any terror yet, so I'm fine. I haven't lost any health yet, I'm fine. But but we don't know what's under these cards. And this only lasts one day, and it just told us in our hints as a gameplay tip. Keep food for at least a couple days, because crap happens. <laughs> so, because of that, I am going to travel north here to the Hunter's Grove and spend an energy okay. to move to an adjacent location. Cannot move diagonal. Only orthogonally or however you say it orthogonally orthogonally however you I say don't it know. i can't say it <laughs> uh, but anyways uh oh. so i move there okay there is no lightning bolt so that doesn't happen but what does happen is now we will have some new locations come in because i went to a new location that doesn't have stuff adjacent to it and within range of the menu here which is one radius away are these cards in order yes perfect so far so far okay but either way I look for the ones that are here. So yeah. I, I knew 106. I see 107. From yep. my angle, I can see. So 106, four dwellers mounds. You can rest there. There's a menu there. No settlement. Two energy to do a treasure hunt, which will gain you a terror because it does not look nice there. Yeah. You get one wealth. There you go. Okay. You gain one terror, one wealth, and roll a die. If the result is six, you jump to verse four for this card in the Exploration Journal. When the former masters of the island gone... Uh, with the former masters of the island gone, no one is left to guard their burial treasures, hopefully. Oh, there's hidden So treasures. it looks kind of like a graveyard, a foggy graveyard. I see the men here up there in the art, which is super sick. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah. So something about burial of the masters and there's treasure here. Yeah. And yes, so good to, good to see. And if you've all played Seventh Continent, you know to kind of investigate the art and read the flavor text and... Try to see if there's anything of interest there. 107 is whitening. It's a settlement, but they don't like us. Right. They're red. Mm -hmm. You can dream there. Or nightmare, I guess. And a menu here is also here. When you enter here, you draw a blue encounter, which is a diplomatic encounter, when you enter the location. You can spend one energy to trade with the townsfolk, where you pay a food to gain a wealth. Oh, here we go. Okay. There, there's two. Boom. There, you, There's an answer to your gaining wealth. And then it says, once, this place had another name and a busy market. Today... No one goes there because Walmart moved in town. <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. All right. Oh, my God. Just kidding. All right. Oh, my God. Okay. Uh, okay. So I moved. Mm -hmm. I expanded the map. And I can expand that because the men here, like I said, he lights up one space away. And it, that does count diagonally. But we can't go any further. So I do not add the one up here. Yeah, because you can't see that far. All right. But now we know many here's can be lit here. So now we know if they are lit, it will mm -hmm. expand at least north and east here and north and west here. According to our rules lawyers in the uh, chat that are they're as official as I want right now. Mm -hmm. So it's perfect. Uh, okay. So now that I'm there, yep. I could go and hunt. You could come and join me in a hunt. But the problem is, 
what we gain, we divvy. But there's no limit once per day there. So I could hunt, and then you can come and hunt separately. Mm -hmm. And we both will get two food if you defeat it. Or sorry, you get two food right away, but then you draw a green encounter. And I know what the green encounter is, so I know you could get an additional food. Oh, okay. Uh, well, I only know the first green encounter. After that, I do not know what it is. So... Right. Yeah. So that's what yeah. I want to do. I want to just gather some food. So I well, can go and show you how that works if you want before you even do any actions. Well, the only thing I want to do is inspect the men here before I leave. What you need to do is explore this and ex and you could look at them in here as free but yes they were hinting that we should explore this location so if you want to be the person to do that that's fine do you want to do that right now sure okay so you're going to explore so i gotta pay one you use an energy okay because you're going to start walking around and, and exploring yep tired. That's, that's tiring all right so normally it would flip over the card read a little blurb on the back and then it would tell us to jump to whatever we're not doing that I'm not picking up these cards over and over again. So what I'll do is just keep it keep it flowing. I'll jump to 101. You got to be careful that the book isn't on the camera. They're, even if it is, they're not going to be able to read okay. it from there. I okay. hope not. And if you're pausing the video and trying to read spoilers, you're crazy. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you're Batman trying to be a detective and learn as much as you can. Uh, all right. Are you ready? Oh, wow, yeah. You ready? Yeah, no. <laughs> Here's the page for 101. Look at all that stuff. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to read the first little section at the top. A deep feeling of loss fills everything in Kunat, from dilapidated farms to the sunken eyes of those who remain in town. So this stuff's on the back of the card. Okay. The men here in the market is all but extinguished, and everyone brave or resourceful enough has left to find a solution. If you have the winds of weirdness status, which we don't have any statuses because you haven't put anything on our save sheet, right? Mm-hmm. Remove this location card from the game and replace it with location 121. Then explore this new location for free, which isn't happening. If you have the secret card 66, go to verse 4. Do we have that card? No. Nope. Okay. So we, we have keep, nothing. So we keep reading. If you have the hunter's mark status, go to verse 6. No. No? We don't have that either? Okay. You don't need me to write all this down, right? Because we don't really care? No, I'm just asking you for fun. Okay. Uh, okay. Otherwise, choose one. So here's our options. Okay. Visit the families of the champions from the first expedition. If you go to, if you're if you're to find them, knowing more about them might help. Go to verse one. So you visit the families of the champions from the first expedition. Okay. Or ask the townsfolk to help you prepare. Where you'd go to verse three. Or rest for the day in your own home. You'd go to verse five. Okay. But I don't think you want to end our day yet. No. Wander the alleys twisted by the weirdness. Only if the men your model is not in this location, go to verse 9, which is not. So you can't choose that one. Or you can leave where the exploration ends. I close this book and we move on. So, well, there's only two options I wanted to do. Visit the families or... or ask the townsfolk to help you yes. prepare. Yes, uh, I think I will ask the townsfolk. Ask the townsfolk to help you prepare? Yes. So I go to verse 3. Though they have little left, they share with you the last remaining supplies. Somehow, this seems unworthy of a hero. But since all the true heroes were lost, who will dare question your methods? If you have at least one rep and you don't have the scrounger status, each party member gains two food. Sweet. So, so I you... have one rep and I don't have... Yep, you gain stuff. two food. Beautiful. And I'm not with you in a party, so that's one, not happening for me. Two. Okay. A little jelly. Then... But if I were to explore with you, I would also have to spend an uh, energy there for us both to be do following this yes. book together, just so you know. And then that would be, we would both get, each if party Each would party get member it? gets two food, oh, yes. it's not even shared. Yep. Nice. Th then gain a random item and the scrounger status. Uh-oh. So Is flip over your thing, uh, the, the our save sheet. Oh, yeah. Give us the scrounger status, because you're scrounging for help. That way you can't do this again. So that's its way of locking you out of doing this over and over and over and creating a loop. I assume we just check mark it? I'm sure. Okay. Whatever we want. Okay. It's our sheet. It's our we sheet. do what we want. <laughs> All right. Uh, so you get a random item. Okay. Uh, I'm so excited. I have shuffled these earlier, but I will cut. Caffeine Gaming Club. Thank you for subscribing. Awesome. Much you. appreciated. Uh, so I cut them there. So you'll get a random item. Yep. There you go. What'd you get? I got a helmet of a hero in combat or diplomacy. Flip this item to prevent a discard. Uh, I'm not familiar with all of the symbols and what they stand for yet. So let's show them here. So we got helmet of a hero. 
in combat or diplomacy, flip this card to prevent a discard. Yeah, so sometimes, no, no, listen, sometimes yep. when you're building that chain of cards, mm -hmm. sometimes the enemy on their turn will discard the last card in your yes. chain. Yes, yes. So it prevents that discard, and then when the enemy is attacking, you flip this item to you. You can flip the item when they attack you to prevent a terror. Okay. And when you flip, it stays flipped till the end of that encounter. Then you can flip it back, go to another guy, and flip it back up and, and use it again. Cool. I like so it. So keep that with you somewhere. Can uh, you see that? Yeah. Oh, it. you can see that. Yep. Just keep it down there. That's fine. Okay. When I go to use it, we can talk about it again. Yeah. Okay. Uh, oops. Let me just make sure that said end exploration. Uh, where were we? We were on verse three. Yep, exploration ends. Okay. Okay, that was exciting. Oh, but can we do the men here while we're there? It's yeah, great. absolutely. Uh, absolutely. Sorry. It's uh, while we're there. Yeah, you want to check that. Okay, yeah. so the men here. The local men here is weathered and cracked. It requires special attention. Requires all characters to be in the space. Okay. You need the men here right secret card, which we're trying to get from our quest. Okay. And the Stone Shaper's Tools secret card. Then, per player, we need to pay two energy, two health, two wealth, and two magic. Per player. Two energy, two wealth, two... What did you say last thing? Two energy, two health, two wealth, two and two magic. Two health and two magic. So basically what I'm reading here is... We're not doing this one anytime soon. We need to do one of the other men here's probably, mm -hmm. but we'll go check there and find out how much it costs to flip one of those. But I bet they're purposely making this one hard because we need men here rights, which is this quest. We need stone sh shapers tools, secret card. I don't know how we're getting that, but it's probably going to take some exploring um, and, to get that. And then plus all the stats, like we both need to be there and then lose two health each. Two wealth. Uh, I have no wealth. Obviously, there's ways to get wealth, but that's going to take time and yeah. actions and days, right? So mm -hmm. this could take a while, and we may not be able to do it in time. But when you do do it, you can do it, say it's down to like five or three or zero days left. You can activate it even when it has some left, and it just kind of charges it back up to seven where we started as two players. Okay. And if there aren't enough models left, you take it from another location of your choice. Hint, the men here in your hometown will be beyond your help for quite some time. <laughs> Other nearby men here are easy to activate. Well. Uh. Of course. There you go. Right there it tells you. Okay. Okay. Perfect. But it's good to know what you need. Yes. Because and, you also... and that is good because that was our tip in the book. It tells you. Keep, make note. Once you find men here, find out what they are as quick as you can so then you know what you're saving up. Oh, and this is men here on 101. 101. 101. Okay. So Mel's got a little notebook to the side. No, we don't have the adventurer's notebook that was part of the Kickstarter. We're just using a small little notebook <laughs> I got at an IT convention. Uh, but yeah, we're going to keep it in there. It's small. It doesn't take up too much table space. So we'll be taking notes, especially when you get tasks and stuff in the game. It recommends, like the quest stuff is on the card, so you can always look at it. It's in your active quest pile. But if you get little tasks on the side or things are on the back of cards or in the, the journal, we don't want to keep flipping back to the book. So Mel's going to make a little note. She's going to be our little note keeper as mm -hmm. we go through the campaign. That should help it keep it flowing. And so we don't forget something, especially if we're playing days apart each chapter, then it's like, brr. Okay. Um, okay, so... Okay, so... If I come and join you for this... I wouldn't. You wouldn't? Okay. Nope. Okay, go ahead then. I'll show you. All right. Okay. Um, but you might want to come that way because remember, you can't go diagonal. So you might want to go this way or up here. You might want to go up and this way. Yeah, I'm not quite sure yet. Yeah. But remember, you got to have an arrows connecting the locations. Yes. So all these, I think, are... Oh, no. no you, you can't, can't go, go this up. way. Yeah. You can't... These two aren't joined. So you to get up to here, yeah, you got to go up and to the left. Okay. So that's perfect. There's an example right there. Okay. And it looks like there's another one we can get here and possibly another one you can get here. Yeah, so if I went down here, it would open up these two. Right? No, it wouldn't open one here because there's no arrow Oh, there's here. no arrow there. Sorry, sorry, yeah. sorry. Yeah. But if you went here, you could open up that one there. Okay. Get it? Yep, got it. All right. I'm going to spend an action, two uh, energy, sorry, mm -hmm. to do an action uh, on the location. So I'm doing the gather food on the hunter's grove. So I'm going hunting. I'm going to gain two food, and I'm going to do our first... Draw a green encounter? Yeah, I'll do the green encounter, which will be this first one from yesterday. Those who watched know what's happening. So on here, you have the title of the enemy. Okay. If there was a G there, it would be a guardian, which means it would stick around after if we don't 
defeat it and chase us around the board. That is creepy. Yes, it's some creepy little rat vermin, but it's only four in the combat pool or greater are needed to just squish this little mouse. Okay. Attribute keys are on the side. You know all about that. Mm -hmm. We'll go through it. Combat pool, put on the left. Mm -hmm. It's also reminding us there's a combat table there, which lets you know when it gets to the enemy's turn, based on what's in the combat pool for red cubes, they will do a specific action in the table. Opportunity means if you don't play any cards on a turn, it will take its opportunity action. Or if we're trying to escape, it will take its opportunity action, which in this case is run away. So you lose the chance of catching them and getting the loot, which would be one food. If we were together, loot is not for both of us. Loot is a shared resource. So yeah. we would decide if we were together, who gets the one food. So that's why I was saying, don't come with me. You don't need to for this. Oh yeah, because you knew it was only one? Yeah, and I, I think I'll be fine. I mean, I'm not the most combat heavy dude, but I'm, I think I'll be okay squishing a four mouse, hopefully. Um, but yes, so this, this green text isn't normally on the encounter cards. Hopefully we'll see some that aren't the first. Because now that we got that, I will take away uh, this white and I'll take away the pink. But I'll leave the blue for diplomacy so we can also walk through that because it's a little different. Okay. All right. I don't know if you can zoom in a bit. Uh, zoom in on creature, please. Oh, sorry. Let me just do it this way. So I don't wobble the camera. So that's why I was saying the table is here. Opportunity, food, combat pool on the left, creature's name, and we have uh, the... Uh, Counter value, sorry. The amount to win, you need to have four or higher on this guy. And here's all your keys that are going to start connecting on the right. And yeah, there's a little enemy symbol under there, but you can't see it. But all right, here we go. So combat. So obviously you have your deck shuffled. Yep. And you shuffle it after every encounter. Uh, and then we'll draw three cards. And I'll look at said three cards. And also there's some steps that will get skipped. But the same idea. Obviously, on the first thing, there's no delayed abilities, but it's saying, so we're picking the active character. I'm the active character. There's no other characters in it. But if we were both together, you and I could look at each other, just like in Mansion of Madness, Lord of the Rings, all that. So on the side, we can choose every time, like, who wants to go first kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So once you go, though, you will take a time marker if we're together, and you'll put it on your thing and say that you've gone, just like Funkoverse. Yep. And we check again. And when we check readiness, that is us checking. Does anyone else need to take a turn? Once they're done, boom, then you're actually fully end a turn. So each character kind of gets a turn within a turn before the turn ends. I don't know how you want to say it. They get an activation, sorry. Okay. We each get an activation in to fully complete a turn. All right. Okay. So um, I think that's it. Pre but I'm going to play cards. First card I play, no restrictions. There's always a free key. We'll always connect. On this guy, it's going to do one times whatever is on the right. If it's black here, nothing happens. This one's going to draw me a card. This one does nothing. But if I play this as a second card, it's got a bonus in the free key. So most likely I want to play this as something as a second card if I have the choice. I also could look at my hand and start seeing if I can put combos together. Because the first card I play, there's I don't have to worry about these bonus things connecting. So I could play... These all have bonus keys, but sometimes they don't at all. So right. you know that's a card you can only play the first time. So what I'm going to do is, see, this one doesn't have stuff. Like, I know I don't have practicality, so I know I'm going to have trouble connecting that bonus there. But magic, maybe I don't want to spend magic, but look at this three times. <laughs> That's why there's nothing else on here. It's trying to balance it out and give it a three times. But they have abilities on them too. So this one, find weakness. I could play this right now, draw a card off of it, then do the ability, which would say on the enemy's turn, they're going to get an extra damage on me. So it's also a balancing thing. And then I put a time token on it, and if that time token's there on the next character activation, which would be you if you were with me, but if it's me because I'm by myself, I would then draw a card on my next turn. If I decide to play a second card on the same turn, it covers up that ability and gets rid of it and probably throws a new ability down. Okay. But I know looking at this, I can play this as my second card because the bonus, I'm looking to connect a bonus on the second card. First card, I don't worry about it. Yep. So I know I can tag this one up here, this distraction, and it will... Three times nothing. It does nothing. And I don't have this, so I don't get any red cubes. But I literally may want to play this to just cover this ability. Sometimes you just might want to do that or get a card out of your hand. Yeah. Because you do have to discard down a three at the end. This one says, on the enemy's turn, if the enemy deals any damage, they lose that many red cubes out of their combat pool instead. That's cool. 
So, so it, it helps. A... It's a distraction. It kind of directs their damage elsewhere, but it could set me back when I just rather take a hit and just want them to die. Mm -hmm. Then my other card is Gather Thoughts. So I can play this is my second card as long as, and I know this is the practicality line. The courage line is next, and the aggression. It's in the same order that is on your player board. Um, I'm, I would need to connect practicality, which I know I don't have. So super annoying that I don't have a single in that stat. So I see these cards in my deck, and I'm like, ah, I need that skill or that attribute. I could pay to connect the magic, which sucks, and I don't get anything out of the free key. But I could put a time token on this, and on my next turn, I could lose a red cube to draw two cards. So it's kind of like a desperation mm. play. Yeah. I gather my thoughts. I take a minute. So I think I'll probably play two. But the problem is I'm not putting any red cubes on it. And if it tries to, if the enemy deals any damage, lose that many red cubes instead. If it goes to lose red cubes and it doesn't have any, I have to discard from, I believe, the top of my deck. Uh, oh, I read this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I just want to make sure if it's deck or hand. I remember if you run out of your hand, they go from the deck. Just double check. I never got in that situation when I was practicing combat earlier, but now I see it could happen, so let's just double check. Um, no cards in deck. You're dying, discarding from an empty hand. Where is the negative combat pool? The combat pool can never become negative. Whenever an enemy attack or another effect asks you to remove a marker from the combat pool, but there are not enough markers, the player controlling the active character discards a card from their hand for every excess point instead. If there are no cards to discard in hand, then you do them from the deck. Okay. Uh, so that makes sense. Okay. So, I don't want to get in that situation. So I kind of need to throw a damage at him. And I, won't, I can't do it with any of these cards. But I can mulligan right now. Mm -hmm. And, and I would just draw, draw two. two. Yeah. Which, what I have here is pretty trash. But I could draw a card off this first one and maybe get lucky. So maybe I do that. So I play that and I connect it. So I'm going to draw a card. First, I look down the keys from top to bottom. It has no keys connecting at the top. Then I do the magic. So first you do attributes. Then I do magic. This is a bonus thing. It doesn't matter right now on the first card. Don't care. Then I do draw a card. I get one times draw a card. Draw a card. Ooh, still crappy. Okay. So now I can decide, do I want to leave this? The enemy will deal me one extra damage. But I put a time token on it right now, actually, as I play it. So once you do the keys, you actually then do the abilities. So this one has a time token for drawing a card. I could just leave it, and then he'll just hit me on a 0 to 2. He'd hit me for 1 and then another damage. That might not be too bad, and then I get to draw another card. I could keep this. I discard and I draw a new card. Maybe I'll just try to draw and hopefully draw into better cards in my deck, but I probably should have mulligan. Okay, so... Because that 3 times... If I can get a red cube at the bottom, and yeah. literally I'm screwed. This does nothing, this does nothing, this does nothing. I literally got jacked, and all the keys on the top, like, don't do anything for me because I don't have practicality. So, I, I like, my deck is really beating me here. Um, maybe it's because I'm not the best fighter, maybe I just drew bad, but whatever. Okay, so I'll leave it. Goes to the enemy. Enemy's going to go on 0-2. to two. He smacks me for 1, and an extra 1 because of this find weakness card I left out here. 1, 2. So I go down to 6. Doesn't change my max energy yet, but remember, my energy cannot go above my little health T-bar. And if my terror ever goes above my little health T-bar, uh, I will start panicking. And instead of picking that first card from my hand like I just did, I pick it from the top of my combat deck. And then at the end of the turn, I don't draw back up. But I still can draw as normal from cards like this during the turn. Okay. So it gets a little wonky and, yeah, Russian roulette style if I'm panicking, which is kind of cool. All right. So it's back to my turn. I remove this time token, draw a card. Oh, sorry, end of the turn. Discard down to three, draw a card at the end of the turn. Now I remove that time token. So let's just double check that I'm not skipping anything here. So you always check your victory check after I went on my turn. And I played cards, so I don't have to do the opportunity. Then the enemy attacks, so I resolve their attack, which I did. Then I perform victory check, because sometimes they might do something that hurts themselves. Oh, and then they, and they might die then, so I don't even have to go to my next turn. Then I check readiness, which doesn't matter because I'm playing by myself. And then at the end of the turn, I discard down to three, I draw, and then I start my next turn. Okay, so I got my cards. Uh, so I had down to three, I drew, and now I'm drawing for this one, right? So yep. I should be up to five. Of course, I don't see a single red cube on the left side yet. That can help me at all. 
but maybe some of these abilities yeah this hand is like bleh. if you did if you did this this uh draw a card on here you would draw three yes, times 100 percent. i would draw three cards which that is probably a good idea right now <laughs> <laughs> and then the ability is enemy instead of the enemy attack i lose red cubes and discard the last card in the chain which, which i that? don't yeah. want to happen because remember if i lose i have to discard cards from hand but wait half these cards are trash so maybe i want to lose them <laughs> from hand so um this is cool this is supposed to be like an easy encounter i'm getting like uh, gonna get wrecked here uh okay so let's do that let's play entangling trap and the cool part it does it lines up all these keys here so that that could be helpful too uh okay so i'm gonna draw three cards one two three all right so here we go look at this two red cubes red cube red cube so now i'm getting stuff that can actually do some damage and funny oh. if i spend a magic on that one to connect that red cube and get it uh he will die now. yeah he would just die in one shot but is there any other cute stuff i can do i don't want to gain terror i could do a delayed gain look at this one i can do too i can get a red cube off of uh but can i play it this is the first card i played yeah I would have to, to play this one, I'd have to spend a magic, because remember on the oh, second, yeah, yeah. third, fourth card, whatever, I have to connect a bonus uh, symbol. So that one I have to pay magic. But this one... This one I don't have to pay. But you could play this one and then this one? No, as soon as I play this one, I can just end if I want. Yeah, but you could connect it to this, no? Uh, you're saying play this one second? Yeah. Uh, no. No. Because this, this doesn't line up to anything no. on this okay. card. So that's why this card has like nothing oh. here. And, and like once you do this one, it doesn't even give you anything off the free. But we'll just do it. We'll finish it. So I'm playing this uh, and it's connecting on this bonus of courage. I look over here. How many courage symbols is in there? One. one. So I look back to my board here. I have one in my courage. If I had two little piggies, then I need to have two in my courage at least. Um, so we'll do the finishing blow. So it connects. Then we'll go from top to bottom. So I get two red cubes. Go in the combat pool from connecting one aggression. I have one aggression. Look, yep. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Okay, one aggression. Then I continue down. Did that key connect? Oh, that's the bonus one. That's fine. Skip it. Then, oh. The magic key doesn't Magic doesn't connect. connect. I wasn't paying attention. So maybe we don't do this. Hold on. Hold but, on. Oh, no, they'll lose too. I they'll forgot lose. about the magic thing. Okay, I can't see because there's like glare on these sleeves. So I'm like trying to lean over. So maybe I play a little cute first. So let me think here. Is there something I can play first that creates that connection? Reposition. So if I play reposition first, I'm connecting this bonus key mm -hmm. down here. And normally that would just block you from drawing cards or getting red cubes or whatever. Yep. But it's just creating a connection for me. Now it's opening up all those. There, now you can. So now I play final blow because I have courage. I do the two red cubes. I then pay one magic to get this red cube, which I'm just doing for show, but I probably should have played something else to not waste magic already on this little guy. And then down here, one times red cube on the free key. Mm -hmm. And then ability. When the enemy goes, I lose two red cubes and plus one damage. So it's like really bad if I don't finish them here or cover this card up. Um, I just need to know if that red X blocks you from connecting the bonus. Cancel oh. next bonus. No, I think it just stops you from drawing uh, or getting red cubes and stuff. Let me just double check. Oh, from like drawing cards or whatever? Yeah. Voids the next icon. Oh. It just says, for example, you don't draw when it has that there. not sure let's see let's see what the chat's saying uh such a complicated game here i'm trying to catch up with you we'll play in the future star wars rebellion expansion please who are you <clears throat> do we have them uh we did play star wars rebellion with the expansion i don't know if there's a new expansion coming out but we played with that one that um came out last uh, i believe i saw it on the comment reference card not sure though you're right tony back 
What is he saying? They were talking about when you were looking up um, something a few seconds ago that now I forget. Hmm. Okay. I'm not sure, but I think that red X just cancels you from getting like the red cube or drawing a card and stuff. Because this is just like a bonus key to let you play the card, but I don't know if it blocks you from connecting it. Well, that's something if anyone watching this in the future leaves in the comments, that would help us. But either way... What was your question? Sorry. Uh, the question was, um, on the card, can I connect this bonus? Can I play this bonus card if it's connecting to a red here? Does that work? That's... I don't know. Like, I know this red cancels you drawing cards or getting red cubes and whatnot, but I don't know that... Like, I'm not getting a bonus off that, but I don't know if that's the same... If it stops you from connecting that. I don't think so, but I could be wrong. But yes, combat, once you get the understanding of how it flows, it's not that bad. You just have to do a couple of them, and I think that's why they give you the start here rules. So you get to go through a combat, and it kind of holds your hand. And I'm really explaining it for those who are watching for the first time, and for Mel, who's never done a combat, I'm really walking through it and probably not, comp not explaining it as smooth as I could. But once you have the reference card in front of you, it's not that hard. It's literally like you just go through the motions, and it becomes second nature. Like how complicated is Gloomhaven's combat? And then like once you do it a few times, we were like, you don't even think about yeah. it. You're just like, boom, you look at your card. This, you're only choosing from like three or four cards in your hand. Gloomhaven, you're looking at like your whole mitt and you're trying to like, what <laughs> pairs with what? What yeah. influence or what initiative I want to go yeah. on? This is a lot more streamlined than that, I think, so far. But we haven't got the advanced cards in here yet, right? So if it's the first card you played, your turn, yep. There are no requirements to play the first one. Uh, uh, was wasn't... that the first one? I don't think so. No, it wasn't. No, because that because you left it there with the time token, and then you drew and played all these. Um... Hmm. You can play, but no bonus. Yeah, I thought so. Okay. Wouldn't, Wouldn't be able to play that sequence as your second card is voided, the play extra card bonus. Okay, perfect. Okay, so we can't right. do this. Perfect, undo. Rewind. No problem. Rewind. So we'll take all these. No, pro no, do you no. Want leave to take that, that one. Back? Um, let me see. And then just start your whole no, turn No, 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 because I drew the three cards. That was oh, fine. Oh, yeah, yeah. That yeah. was fine. So now I got to look. I have so many options, so let's, like, I just rushed to that, right? But Yeah. Because um, you were just looking to connect the magic. Oh, yeah. So let me get a magic back, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but I was just trying to demo that, but it's like, it makes sense. So I got to remember, this one cancels, like, even this. So that was the first card I played, right? Was it draw three cards? Or was it? Yes, that was on this turn. This is the first I'm card holding play, the cards yes. right now, yes. So, let's see here. So a black one wouldn't be bad because it's going to cancel it anyway, but mm -hmm. I need to connect. I can't connect practicality, but I could... And I can't connect magic, right? But you can can't do aggression. No, no, no. I'm now looking for these symbols to connect. Oh, right, right, right. Because I'm playing the second card yeah, now. Yeah, sorry. Okay? So it's all about those bonus connections. Yeah. So final blow doesn't work. It doesn't finish. And I don't want to put that down. Reposition I can't because it can't connect to the bottom. This one, same. This one, there's no magic and I don't have practicality. No magic practicality. Courage, I could play Charge, and it would block this red cube from happening, mm -hmm. and, but it would give me this one. And then when the enemy attacks me, I take an extra damage, but I could also draw another card. And then I have War then, Magic, mm -hmm. which I can't play because there's no magic connection. So right, I literally only you, have one choice. Yeah, and do you have Courage that then you can connect something else to this one? After? Hmm... Well, this one I can connect that original combo line, right? Yeah. So I can originally play a reposition after that, right? Yeah. Right? Because if I play charge, so let's put those down for a sec. If I play charge, and then I can connect this bonus card, mm -hmm. and then this one I can connect this bonus card. Yeah, and then you won't even need to pay Correct. the magic. Yeah. I knew I would have something in the hand, but I just wasn't sure. I think we jumped ahead too quick. All right. So I'm going to play this one, because I'm connecting the bonus key to the courage. So aggression... Gets me one in the pool. And the free key gets blocked. So I don't get that bonus. Now if the enemy attacks me, I get one. And I'll put a time token down to remind me to draw a card. But I am now going to play reposition. 
get rid of this time token, connect the free key with the bonus, no other abilities there. And then this one says, if you escape from combat, ignore the opportunity attack. Kind of cool. Uh, and then the final one, I'll connect the courage here and I'll get two for my single aggression that I have. And I continue down. I won't pay the magic, but the free key will get me one red one. Okay. Yep. And then if the enemy were to go, I'd lose two red cubes and take an extra damage, which is very bad. But I'm now going to check to see if I killed them. I did. Four or higher. That's done. And I'll gain one food. Okay. These will get discarded. All my hand, my discard, and my clay cards all get shuffled back in to my combat deck. And hopefully I don't draw that bad again. But it's kind of cool the whole draw that I'll tricked off of that three times card, right? Yeah. It's cool that you saw that. Yeah. So you're already more of a pro than I am. Uh, this guy's <laughs> gone. We normally would put the encounter at the bottom of the deck. Uh, his deck, but this is that first one. We're just going to toss it out of the game. Okay. Uh, um, so we just deal with we deal with the real threats now. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. And that's that. Hmm. Now, <laughs> I may have I may have made this up in my brain, but is there one of these decks that are easier than the others? I think I read something that one of the colors was... No. 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 We put level one and level two in all of them. But... I thought I read something. Hunting for food is here. Okay. This, I believe, is like dudes. So like yes. enemies, warriors, and stuff like that. And you can get items mainly from this one. Okay. This stuff is spiritual, beast, monsters, gods, whatever, that kind of stuff, I'm assume. Okay. The bad stuff. So stuff you want to take magic and fight, I assume based on the description. And the blue one is all diplomatic. So when you go to a settlement that doesn't want you there, you're gonna deal with diplomatic challenges here. Right. Okay. Or they say, I don't want you in our village, or whatever. A, a guard, I think the guard was the one yesterday. Okay, ah. Uh... Yeah, suspicious guard okay. is who's sitting on the top of the diplomacy deck for our, our teaching card there. Okay, are you good? Or you want to do something else? No, I, I, I'm, we just know if you can dream there, that's what we, it's hinting that we do at the end of the first day. But uh, I'm going mean, to, I... like, I want to check one of these menus to see the cost of them. Okay. Do but you... I only have, like, one energy left. So whichever way I go, that's where I'm kind of resting. And I might just stay and rest where I am. Okay. But I, I might go here and just check with the menu. Because, like, I'm going to only do one more thing, one more energy. Mm -hmm. So you want me to do that? Yeah, go ahead. Or maybe I'll just come back here. Well, I'm going to go up and I want to... How much energy do you have? One, two, three? Yeah. Before you get exhausted? Remember when you're exhausted, you only then will recover up to four. So you have like a short turn next time, yeah. which is, might not be worth it. Ah. I can't even do everything I'd want to do, right? Because I would want to go there and then I can't pay two. What are you trying to do? Explain, explain what you're thinking. To go up where you were and do that whole thing that you just did. So you want to go gather food? But I don't have enough to do that. So I you move think. one, go down to four. Then you spend one, two. And then that would be just where you end your day. But yeah, you could then do one more to get back home. But then you'd only go up to four next next day. No. If you're okay with that. And it's not the worst thing. Because your guy doesn't get... Like the guy was playing yesterday. He actually, when you get exhausted, you lose a health also, which is super annoying. But in this case, you don't. I can pay two to gain one food out of settlements. What's the symbol for settlements again? Or is this something? How do I know? Uh, just anywhere that doesn't have little houses. So the only settlements right now are this and this. Okay. Good one and bad one. <laughs> well, oh, right, unwelcoming that's yeah, yeah. one. Okay. Um, you could explore down here. You could explore here or here. You could go wherever, but... This one's a gray encounter, so I, I don't know what that is, but it's something that could be bad or good. I don't even know, but I'm not. Yeah, and that'll happen automatically. Yeah, and I'm not going there yet. Okay. But I want to actually do chores. Okay. So I'm going to pay one. So gain a rep. And I'm going to do chores, okay. and I'm going to gain one rep. So we'll put a time token on here, so you're gaining one rep once per day by doing chores for the townsfolk. Mm-hmm. You could explore there to try to do uh, the other option in the book, too. 
If you're just going to stay there. Yeah, that might be smart. And then I'll have one left for... Yeah. Yeah, that might be smart. Did you already but do see, whatever But see, then, you... then, like, why wouldn't... If you're, if you're going to end your time with extra, you don't... You lose that, right? So, like, what's the difference from going exhausted and then having down to four instead of six, you're only losing two tomorrow, but you're gaining one today? See what I'm saying? Like, if you're going to just waste energy then why not just go exhausted and have less energy the next day that's the that's the fine balance of the game my friend mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah you don't have to do that but don't waste time no 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 you could come down here and get a uh, pay one wealth and get an item but then again i don't know that i want to do that yet yeah i'm just saying i'm just throwing your options out there you do whatever do what you want just stay there explore the book yeah i'm or... gonna explore there Okay. The other. So spend an energy. We're going to explore it. Quinnat again. Gray is humans. Combat. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. All right. Here we are again. So you've already asked the townsfolk to help you prepare. So we know you can't go that road again because we know you'll end because we have the scavenger or whatever trait, yes. right? Yes. So the other options were visit the families of the champions from the first expedition. Or rest for the day in your own home and go to verse 5. So that would be interesting. Use yeah, your last energy done... to do it that way versus just ending the day and resting there. But I don't think I can rewind, right? What do you mean? Because we already No, had... I mean explore after this another time. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, so... that makes sense. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so... You can't wander the alleys of the Twisted by the Weirdness because we still have a menu there. Yeah. So you want to visit, visit the families of the champions yes. from the first expedition? I would like to, yes. Verse 1. This long winter, nearly everyone here lost a friend or a family member. First to hunger, then to disease. Finally, the five remaining pillars of the community, the only heroes this land ever known, suddenly left. Now, when you look into the distant eyes of the last remaining residents, you realize they want to forget. Loosen their tongues with mead is one option. This is an old custom. A late night wake for those who wandered far from their home. Holding it for everyone who left with the expedition won't be cheap, though. Pay one wealth or one food and go to verse two. So that's one option. So one hold, hold the wake, basically. Loosen okay. their tongues of mead. Or ask them to share their burdens. Requires one uh, empathy. Do you have an empathy? I do. Ooh. Then you could go to verse two. Or leave. Go back to the start of this location and make another choice. I'll do the empathy. Okay, ask them to share their ver burdens. Requires one empathy. Go to verse two. All right. It takes a while to break the silence of the grief-stricken people, but when you do, stories of separations and departures flood you like a torrential rain. You try to remember every de detail. The color of the palfrey horse, the village priestess, Niente Road. The ornament on the hauberk that young Lord Yavin wore. That's the guy who wrote me my letter. The strange drinking horn... Ephir, the smith used to lug around, the birthmark of Fael, the master huntsman, the embroidered cape of Obert, the seasoned traveler who'd seen all parts of the island. Who knows what detail can help you down the road? Gain part one of the fate of the expedition status on our sheet. Part one. Fate of the expedition status. Okay. When you have parts one to eight of the status, go to uh, BOS verse... Book four. of Secrets oh, verse... 405. 405, okay. okay that, so. I, I'm assuming that'll be a while. Okay. We have to get eight of them? Yep. Eight of these Fate of the Expeditions? Yep. All right. Uh, okay. So then it says Exploration Ends. Okay. Do you want to spend another energy to explore again? Uh, I'm and going to... take that rest option? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So you're going to rest for the day in your home. You're going to go to verse five. Many would refuse to call this place a home, but the familiar setting brings you some much-needed serenity. As you lay to rest in your bed, you can't help but wonder whether it is the last night you'll ever spend under this roof. If there is an active menu in this location, each party member gains two health and loses two terror. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if, there is, if there is no menu in this location, each party member gains one health and one terror. Oh, each party member gains one health and gains a terror. If there was no active menu? Yeah, but we're fine. And you pass for the rest of the day, expiration ends. So you're just done. 
Okay. So we'll, well, do, we'll do the know, dream thing. Right? When, we'll do the dream thing when we get to the end of the day. But that's good to know in the future because you, you can do that again. Yeah, you can come there to get to as long as the menu is there, you can get two, two health, health and lose two terror. If you're kind of that's a good that's a good heal. Yeah. So we know that now thanks to you spending an energy to explore. Okay. We now know some other options. Okay, and I think you have one more, right? If you want to spend it, or you have more than one, but. Mm -mm. Yeah, but I don't want to get exhausted. I don't think. Um, I don't want to go to the right where I would draw an encounter when I enter this location to do a diplomatic one. Um, let me go. Uh, I'll spend one energy to move here uh, to the Four Dwellers Mound. Okay. Now I'm going to check the menu there. I'll actually just do it this way. So the menu at the bottom here, uh, it's free to activate a menu here, or whatever, I guess it's free to look at this, activate a menu, requires all characters and the menu right secret card, same as the other one. Okay. But this one, pay one energy, one health, two wealth, and one food per player. So that's less. Put a new menu or model in this location, that says style nine minus one per player. Okay, so this is the one on So the same thing, all characters, menu rights. Yep. And then one energy, one health, two wealth, and one food per player. So it's always per player for many years, and we all need to be there anyway. And one and of us, we, I guess, has to have this many rights. And then we card. need the rights card. Yeah, and all of us together. Okay, I think that's the standard thing in the rule book. It says you always have to have everyone there. Okay. Because it takes a lot of effort. All right. So that was my free action. I'm gonna end my time. My day is ended, and we'll just end it up here. So I pass. I guess is the correct action I just took. All right. End of the day. So now we rest and consume one food if you want to restore a health and lose a tear. If you don't have enough food, drop your energy to zero. If it was already zero, lose a health instead. So you can not eat food if you want. You don't need to, right? But then the problem is you drop down to zero. Oh. And then now you're exhausted, so then you only go up to four. So you got to eat. Yeah, I got to eat. Just so that you don't become exhausted yeah. is basically what's happening. And then, I, and then I'll be able to restore to full or to my six, yes. right? So now I'll use a food also. Uh, so I gain a health, which I need, and tear I'm fine. Uh, but then now we restore our um, energy to full. So I'll go up to six. You go up to six. Six as well. Uh, and then it says advance your character by spending experience if you want. I only have one. The minimum you need is two yep, to buy anything well. from my understanding. Then we modify our decks, but I don't have any new cards, so that's not happening. If you're in a location with the dream icon, read the dream. So let's do mine first. Yep, because you got to flip. I'm going to flip a dial thanks to my recovering addict ability. It's a skull, so I'm going to read the nightmare oh. if, if there is one. So this is 106. Whoops. Okay, 106. Nightmare. You wake up alone in a dense mist that seems to cover the entire world. The sun, the moon, and the stars are gone, leaving only milky nothingness. You spend hours wandering blindly. There is nothing left. All your world has returned to the void. You wake up with a sharp sting in your heart and a sweaty back. Each character who has this nightmare gains a terror. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. And then my dream? Oh, yes. <laughs> Duh. 101. All right. <laughs> I'll get the hang of this. Eventually. Oh, I see why those pages look so big now. Because all these sections. Yeah. From, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Okay, the dream. And this was hinting at us to read this for hints. And I see there's a hint here at the end of the dream. So, okay. in your restless dream, a pale lady rises from the water. Her eyes milky and her skin spoiled with rot. She whispers something in your ear. Her breath smells of sea salt, kelp, and rotten fish. You barely remember the words. There was something about three enigmas, one hidden under the Isle of the Dead... One clutched in the grasp of bur burned hands and arms, and one buried in the mist in a mist-covered mound. But what could it mean? Hint: the dream refers to three out of eight locations surrounding Kunat. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I guess eight. I, I don't know. Eight. Uh, whatever. Um, three out of eight locations surrounding Kunat. It's possible some of them are not yet revealed. Well, no kidding. <laughs> so sorry. Oh yes. So the so if we read it is 
There was something about three enigmas. One yeah. hidden under the Isle of the Dead. Oh, you read that. Uh, this was the former masters of the island gone. No one is left to guard their burial treasures. And it looks like tombstones kind of in fog there. But there's also one buried in a mist-covered mound. Hmm, interesting. Uh, I don't know if we even have that one yet. Doesn't that look like mist on that one? Yeah, like that's what I would think of this one is. But either way, so that's two things that point to this one. So I'm going to say that's probably one of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then uh, one clutched in the grasp of burned hands and arms. And I remember oh. burning, fl yeah, burnt flesh. Yep. So that might be our burnt one there. Okay, I'll go to that one next. Quite the human. Okay. Uh, yeah. But it might, might be because it said out of eight. So we haven't uncovered here and here. So, I mean, we might uncover one of those and it's like a giant mountain covered in fog or mist mm -hmm. or something. Like, who knows? It says a mound, covered mound. That might be just this. Like, those are mounds kind of coming out the yeah. mist. But then the other one, maybe we don't have yet, which is under the Isle of the Dead. The Isle of the Dead. But none of these really look like... This kind of looks like an island. Maybe, maybe this water here is an island right here. Maybe there's mm. an island here. Or something i don't know okay. anyways okay so let's just kind of remember that stuff yep that's our dream that it was telling us to read for a hint yeah i know i, I said the same thing at the start she wants me to be the chronicler and read everything because she hates reading out loud i hate reading out loud too because i stumble on words and anyone who reads out loud unless you're really good at it you'll stumble all the time uh, and it's yeah so she w doesn't want to do it she's trying to make me do it and i told <laughs> her not, i'm gonna, I'm gonna make her do it <laughs> so i probably should but, no it's not that i don't want to do it i'm just really trying to learn the game this time yeah and i don't want to throw a book at her where she's trying to like figure out where to read and stuff and i w w yet i yeah but i also understand better listening to him read it to me if i'm reading it and i'm you don't also, comprehend I don't, it fully I, I i'm do, the same way I know but same way. i i catch more when he's reading it to me but don't worry, in future playthroughs, <laughs> yeah, for sure, I'm going to give her the book and she's going to read through it. But here in this initial playthrough, it might be just all me reading, and I'm sorry about that. Yeah. I apologize. And it also is like, uh, <laughs> what do you call it? Like public speaking, right? Even though bit. we're sitting in here by ourselves, like to know no, who are watching we know is you're like all nerve-wracking. We know and, you're uh, there. Okay. Yeah. All right. Anyways, let's get back to it. But thank you for it. I, I appreciate it. I want her to read too. Don't worry. <laughs> it's called The Four Dwellers Mound, Yes. Yes, it is. Oh, see, yes. It okay, is. Right, okay. right behind my little character mini there, there's the word mounds. You're right. We got there. Yeah. So and the name the Warrior Fair, no. Hunter's Grove, no. The Whitening Forlorn Swords. And then the other one was called... I'm going to bet that That's the right grave, here. the Isle Grave is under one of these two. We'll see when we get there. Okay. Okay. So that's that. Yeah. We ended the first day. We yeah. got there. It took a while, but we got there. Yep. Uh, okay. <laughs> Shomar gets me. He gets me. <laughs> it's okay, Mel. <laughs> hey, Shamar, how's it going? He understands. All right. So let's see here. So we're going to go wrap. Uh, oh, so then if you're going insane, you read the nightmares. Or if you're a loser that has to flip coins, you got to read the nightmares. You then start it. the next day. Okay. So we're going to tick down the men here. <sighs> day five. We remove any expired, but there are none. Then we're going to down tick this guy. We're going to remove time tokens. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, reveal the next event card. Okay. Dense mists, oh. each exploration in locations without a settlement costs one additional energy. So if you explore here and the settlement, you're fine. But the rest of the world is dense mists, oh. so you have to spend an extra energy to explore in them right now. So that's okay. annoying. Okay. And it says, so thick you can barely see the tip of your nose. So it's cool. There's like a weather aspect to it. Cool. All right. Well... Do you want to do that one that we think is one that we need to know? Mm. Or no, now you don't because it's a bit more expensive. <laughs> well, yeah, I don't know. Like it's telling me, it's it was telling us, it's kind of saying we should check at those places, right? So it's probably something I should do. Or there is going to be other hints there that will kind of lead us. True. Yeah, but it's going to cost two to do it this day. Right, so we're not going to get as much are, done are as we Are we okay intended. with that? What, what are your plans? Let's talk out our turn here so we don't so, just kind of willy-nilly waste energy. So make sure you kind of map out what you want to do with your energy as we go. Yeah. So two plans that I can do either one. I can either go this way towards the burnt flesh and see what's happening there. 
Ah, that's one or of them, yes. Or go and see if we are correct and if this is an island. True. So right now it could we could do what we think we know or I could go see if we're right and explore the unknown. So what are we trying to get for this min here again? Um, let's see what we need. I'm not reading that, don't worry. Oh, I know, but... Uh, okay. So requires all characters. So oh, I, already, I wrote it down. I know, but anyways, one energy, one health. That's fine. We got that stuff. Mm -hmm. Two wealth each. Yeah. I have zero still. Oh, okay. So I need to get wealth too. Yeah. And I'm standing on a place that can get me we one wealth. We need that card anyways that we haven't got yet. The, um, the many rights. Many rights. Yeah. Which I think that's, that's what that dream is hinting at. That's where you get at one of those places probably. Mm-hmm. Oh man. So I could um, I could go to the whitening cuz that's a settlement and I can do the action there to trade with the townsfolk, gain one food and gain one wealth. Maybe I can do that twice to get my wealth covered. So are you saying go that and then you're going to go back there? No. <laughs> I'm not saying anything beyond that. I'm just thinking of my current day. So you're not you're not thinking about exploring I, that I, one? I just don't want to waste extra energy on exploring that and I can do that on another day maybe. But if I explore here, Mm -hmm. I'm okay. And we need to also check out this menu here too. Okay. So I'm thinking of going to check that one. Okay. So I could just do, do all of that yeah, right now if yeah. you want to see what happens. Yep. That's fine. So I'll spend an energy. And this is only hurting us on exploration. So one to go here. Okay. No, no new things to expand. Spend another energy. I'm going to go here. And then now I draw a blue encounter card when I enter this location. So it's again, it's going to be a diplomatic encounter. I'm going to play this one a little quicker. The only difference for, for diplomatic encounters, we're going to use a different deck and we're going to play a little tug of war here where a red cube is going to go up to the green for me to win or down to the red for me to lose. Okay. There's someone that's getting ready to go, so I just want to say bye to you. Going to sleep now. See you guys later. Ilias, thank you thank for you joining so us. We appreciate it. Of course, you'll be able to watch this <laughs> later on YouTube. Leave stuff in the comments down below if you're watching this again later and you notice anything in the rest of the playthrough. And timestamp it if you guys can. If you find any rules, mistakes watching this later, helps us learn from them and we can easily jump in. It also helps everyone watching this in the future learn from our mistakes. Very helpful. Uh, you'll spend as much energy moving though. True, true. But I'm going to get some other stuff done. All right, so blue encounter happens. I guess it makes sense if you want to have the stuff and then go back yes. there. and then... Let me just... Shuffle quick, a little shuffle. I don't remember if I did. One, two, three. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's put the red cube on it. Okay. So this is a suspicious guard. He has no traits that I see. His reply to me is going to be, his response is going to be explain yourself. If I get this little symbol, if I get this little symbol, uh, there could be different stages to diplomatic encounters. So this, they put this little wild card one here. Just so when it connects, it refers to whatever is happening in that stage because it may change in each stage. So that's just how they revert back with a wild card. Uh, that's the enemy response. So this is stage one of only one. The reward, which we would all get if we were here, would be one rep. There's no loot, so we don't have to divvy up anything. And the failure, I'd lose one rep. Okay? Okay. This is the affinity track, it's called. Put the starting marker in the gray. And this is called the varying bonus, it's actually called. Okay, so we're going to see if we can get past this suspicious guard. And hopefully I can do okay with it because I'm a little more stacked in the diplomacy side of my board here because I have three red cubes versus only two on the combat side. Hopefully my deck doesn't screw me around on this one. <laughs> I'm going to mulligan for sure if I need to. All right. I have staunch defense. I can ignore. So this down arrow obviously mean moves it down. So mm -hmm. I, on an enemy turn, going after I play this card, if I leave that as the active card... Uh, I'll ignore it going down, but then after response, this card gets discarded. Okay. Um, this free key could move it up one, and when I connect on Caution, which I have, I could draw a card, mm. and I have Spirituality, so I would get to move it up one because it has this little wild card bonus symbol. And there's three spaces there? Yeah. yeah. So this can get me up to and draw me a card, but when I play this, if affinity is not green, it goes up one, but it will be green. It won't mm -hmm. be red. So that doesn't work. And then if this one gets discarded, uh, I would take a tear. So this one seems like a good starting card, I think, but let me just check here. I, the only one with bonuses is this one. 
Uh, and here's a passive one actually that has charges in the middle, which we'll deal with if I play it, but it has the symbols on the side. So this actually can stay active in the middle of the chain. Yeah, that's cool. Um, okay, so if I play this one first, I'd have to spend magic to draw a card, but it would move up one and two because I have caution and spirituality. So I can move up two with that. Okay, then on the bonus one here, I can connect. I gain two charges when I play it. I connect here, but that does nothing for me. Then this one I can't play because it doesn't have the bonuses. So I literally have two cards that I have to pick to start from and one that I maybe can play as a bonus. So I am going to start with this Holy Verse. And I'll start going down the side here. So I first draw a card off the caution I have. Then I have spirituality, at least one. So I will bump up the cube up to the first green slot. Then I will bump up one from the free key connecting. So I'm one away from winning. Uh, then I'll do the ability, which when I play it, uh, if affinity is not green, which it is, it goes up. And then if this card gets discarded, I'll gain a tear. So hopefully that doesn't get discarded. I drew a card, so now I have another option. Which one did you draw? This one, Intimidating Magic, which I like the sound. Oh, look at that art, man. Oh, you can look play, at that art. You can play that and win. Yeah, so I can play it and connect the free key and just win off of it. Yeah. And the reason why I can play it is because one of these two bonuses connects to the a caution or the spirituality, which I have both. So I will play that and connect. And I'll go down the card, bonus connect. Magic I won't spend to do the arrow, but the free key will bump it up one. I'll end my turn. I'll do the affinity check, which I check. We're good. So uh, my reward is one reputation. And then all these cards will go back. We'll almost put them in my combat Whoa. deck. Uh, it's going to happen. Sure I was going to say yeah. that. I'm Make sure, sure I didn't draw off the one. wrong deck either. Uh, just double check. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully I don't do that, but I get worried that one of these days I'm going to go draw a card and I'll draw off the wrong deck. Um, I guess you might know because of the symbols. This, and... this reminds me of playing L5R the LCG, but in that game oh. I had black sleeves for one, white sleeves for the other, so it was very obvious when I had black sleeve cards in my handful of white sleeves or vice versa. So, <laughs> uh, But yeah, I'll try to stay correct. But I get worried that that may happen. I might sleeve them different colors to be, even though they are different colors, but I still worry. But they're the same sleeves. That's my problem. Okay, so that's done. This guy goes to the bottom of the deck, but since it's the first encounter one, I'm going to toss it away. Okay. And that's that. So I did that encounter. Mm -hmm. Uh... I still have one, two I can spend. So I could trade with the townsfolk, pay one food and gain one wealth. I also have to spend an energy to do it. That's what you wanted, right? You wanted wealth? Yeah. Actually, let me check the men here first for free. Oh, yes, yes, yes. yes. Let's check the men here. So the men here, here. This is number what? Uh, this is card 107, the whitening. Okay. Requires all characters and the men are right secret card. <laughs> this is a theme. Uh, pay three energy. One health, one wealth, and one magic per player. So how does that compare to the other one? Uh, like this one in the top left. That one is, uh, well, it's more energy. Health, less wealth. This one has no food? Did you say food? No, wealth and magic. Okay, so it's a little bit cheaper. But, magic but a is lot needed. of energy. We, but magic is needed, yes. Uh, and you have the downside of activating menus costs one more magic. Oh, but yeah. But we yeah. have three magic. Yeah, yeah. This uh, That one costs no magic. Okay. This one costs two magic. So the first one we do one energy each, one health each, two wealth, wealth each. Oh, okay. So we actually have enough for this one right now because of the magic. And we, uh, the wealth, we only need, oh, you don't have enough we uh, wealth. I thought you had two wealth, sorry. No. But you're gonna, you can. I could do it right now and get a wealth, and then we're we're good for this one. No, we don't have the secret card. Oh yes, sorry, yes. Okay, but either way. Yeah. Good to know. So based on what we get, okay. Um. Uh, do I explore? I can do two things here. Let me trade with the townsfolk. 
Ryan Wall, thank you for subscribing. Thank you. Much appreciated. All right. So I spend one energy. Okay. I'll trade with the townsfolk. I'll pay a food. And I'll gain a wealth, which I probably could have just moved that red so cube over. <laughs> now we would have enough. Okay. Um, and my last energy, I just want to explore. But, I mean, if you want to do some stuff, go ahead. Um, but that was that's what I'm going to do for my last one is explore. Do you want me to explore first? Yeah, in case it tells me something. All right. <laughs> Get all the knowledge. Okay. So I'm going to explore on 107. Okay. Yeah, I would, I'm not going to remember anything and I'm playing it right now. Like, I won't remember tomorrow anything we read. That's why she's taking notes. <laughs> I'll, like, have to rewatch myself play it before we play again. No, I'm just joking. We'll see. But there's a lot going on. It almost it almost feels overwhelming at first just because yeah. there's so much. But, I mean, it's not It's a little bit how I felt with Seventh Continent when we started that one was just, like, a lot of was happening on cards yeah. and flipping. And I was trying to remember everything. Until you start playing and you realize what's important, what's not important, yeah. and how yeah. the game's rolling, then. All right. The whitening, right? Whitening? Yeah. The hole is here, as always, gaping right in the middle of whitening. The white lichen that gave this town its new name seems to grow out of it. It covers the walls of nearby halls and with a thick coat. Only close up can we discover it is. In fact, a layer of small sparkling crystals, like sea salt, on wooden posts have appeared. As you inspect it, several people watch you suspiciously. If you have the Fails Legacy status and don't have part two of the hidden treasure status, go to verse 10. We don't have that. If you have the winds of weirdness status and don't have part four of the remedy <laughs> status, go to verse 14. <laughs> don't have that. If you're playing Ailey, or if she's in your party, go to verse 13. And don't have that. Otherwise, go to verse seven. Well, that <laughs> makes it very easy. All right, verse seven. Where is it? If you have more than two rep, go to verse 12. Otherwise, go to verse 11. You have two. More way. than two. Oh, oh this stupid, okay. stupid. All right. Otherwise, go to verse 11. All right. 11. Where is 11? <laughs> Some sickly whitening men block your way. You look like trouble, one says, and we have enough of that here. Leave. If you have one or future, one or fewer, uh, one or future aggression, you calm your nerves, breathe deeply, and bring things down a notch. Go to verse 12. If you have two or more aggression, the blood pounds in your vein. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. Verse 12. Uh, now, oh, a whole bunch of other options here. Ask people to help you on your journey. Verse 4. Gather the white lichen. Verse 5. Acquire about Acolyte Briganch. Requires part one of the Garant's successor status, which we don't have. Or leave. So I have two oh, options, yeah. really. Ask the people to help you on your journey. Or gather the white lichen. Hmm. Hmm. How many players does this game be set up for? I've never played a game like this, but it looks interesting. Uh, up to four players, Jean-Claude. Uh, you can play solo, though, too. And it's very puzzly. So mm -hmm. it's, it's cool, it's like, cool. story game. Um, but yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> All right, so we are going to... Well, I'm going to... I kind of want to ask them to help, but then I'm worried, like, it might say you already have that scavenger status. So, like, you can't ask to help here either. Because the statuses that we have are for... They're global. Yeah. They're global. They're okay. for all of us, okay. no matter where you are. Okay. Um, so, word got out that you're uh, you're grubbing for help, and now we might not be able to. But Sorry. gather the white lichen. I'm worried about doing that because I may have them ticked off at me for trying to steal some stuff. So, um... Ask him to help me on my journey. Maybe he'll Empathy give us was a thing. Empathy was your thing, and I don't have any. Oh. So just based on that assumption, I'm going to go gather the white lichen. Verse 5. Okay. All right. People watch horrified as you pluck the lichen with your own hands and stuff it into small deerskin pouch. Some time later, you open the bag only to find some of the lichen is gone. For whatever reason, it seems to slowly disappear once removed from its main body. Gain secret card 32. Ooh. Place a time token and dial on this secret and set them to three. Okay, let's find the secret. Oh, this is exciting. Uh, secret card. Jean-Claude, thanks for subscribing. Oh, thank you. All right. Uh, so let's go here. Secret 32. Where is it? Where is it? 32. Just want to make sure it's the right number. And this is secret for just you. No, we, well, we no. I'll, we I'll, we're know. telling everybody. Yeah, yeah. All right. We're playing open here with the internet. I'm sure you know anyway. You're supposed to know, but... 32, just double checking. All right, here we go. Our first secret there. card. Pale crystals. Pretty. 
Pretty, pretty. Okay. Uh, reduce the dial on this card by one at the start of each day. Discard the secret when the dial runs out. Interesting. Okay. That's it? So we're going to take one of these dials. Yeah. Okay. So what the heck? All right, let's see what else it says. So place a time token and dial on the secret and set them to three. So I'll put a dial on here, which is the same dial you put under a men here. And I will set it to three, which kind of clicks in there. Okay. okay. And that's at the start of every day we're going to turn that. All right. At the start of each day, reduce the dial by one. Once the dial runs out, discard the secret. You may then earn it again. Exploration ends. Oh, I guess if you explored and did that path branching logic again, <laughs> but you have to remember all those things that you just chose. <laughs> I can see the replayability so, being huge yeah. because... Oh! So I got an item, the Pale Crystals. But we don't know how it what works. What are they for? They are probably, from playing any kind of RPG video game from childhood, I know that because this has a time on it and I don't know what it's for, there is some dude sitting in a town somewhere that's saying, bring me the Pale Crystals and I will give you something. Yes. But I don't know where that is and I'm going to lose this because I'm going to run out of time and then find that guy later and then go, dang it, I got to go back and get it. Oh, they said place it in the middle so then you can rotate the token. So it's like pointing. Oh! It's like pointing at the three. Like a Ouija board. Oh, but it. But the way it's like shaped underneath, it's shaped to have like a circle going through it. So to me, it like fits around the outside like that. Oh, I don't know. But you're right. I, that... It also fits in the center too. You're right. You're right. I'm, it was. Uh... I'm a noob. You're right. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> Definitely some dude, probably. There is some dude. Yeah, there's some dude out there. He's sitting in a basement of a village house, and it says, I am error, and then he asks you for the pale crystals. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, okay. let's see here. Okay, let's So, find. I'm putting it on three. The proper way. Thank you for helping me. Well, I'm such a noob. I'm a, uh, a tainted grail fall of Avalon noob. All right. Okay, that didn't help me in my choices Not at all. You at got nothing all. from that. And I'm going to stop there. Either way, I'm not doing any more actions. I'm actually going to rest in whitening. And maybe if I'm lucky and flip my dial correctly based on my recovering addict negative trait, I may actually get to see a dream. But it might be another nightmare. Stay tuned to find out. All right, go <laughs> okay. ahead. Spend some energy okay. and do some things. I am going to use one energy and I'm going to move to the conclave. Curse Conclave. So there is a lightning bolt action yes. which says draw a gray encounter when you enter this location once per day. So the once per day thing. Whoops, wrong token. So we'll put this on it to signify the once per day. And okay. we're going to draw a gray. Are you ready? I'm For so your first ready. real encounter? Yeah. Not a my first encounter training card? Yeah. <laughs> oh. Seasoned Warrior Level 2. Oh no. Beware of old men in professions. Where most men die young. <laughs> okay. Faint. So he has the ability, the uh, trait fate, faint, uh, which says damage in step three can be prevented, can't be prevented in any way. So if you have any kind of uh, ability when you're playing your cards that says ignore damage or instead of damage, lose red cubes or something like that, you can't stop it in any way. So you're always going to take damage from this guy. Awesome. His... Uh, table here says if he has zero to one in his combat pool, he's going to do one damage to you. If he has two cubes in there, you're going to, he's going to lose two cubes away. So it'll go back down to zero on three to five. He's going to damage you for three and on six to eight, he will damage you for two and he'll take a red cube out opportunity. If you don't play a card on a turn at all, uh, you'll lose two red cubes and you'll discard the last one in the chain. If you beat him, you get one wealth and one item. Uh, and that is basically all oh, we need nine to beat. Can I run away? Yes, 100%. <laughs> I probably would try to escape. Now, but, can you, sorry, can you draw your three cards first? Yep. Yeah. You could even fight a bunch and then just decide I'm going to escape now. And then you just have to do the opportunity thing. That's it. Which is fine. It just it doesn't just, hurt yeah. me. Uh, you're fine, yeah. I would start it and see how it goes, but careful. Like once you start losing health, yeah, it might make it dangerous. Yeah. Because at low, he's gonna. So you need to get to nine, and the ride there, he's gonna keep messing with you. He's either gonna hit you hard or set you back again. So you need to get like some kind of 
you need to jump from like two to nine. Like this guy, we need to tackle together, I think. <laughs> this is a lot. <laughs> Erev is pretty strong based on what I've seen of the archetype decks. Yeah. That's a tough one. You're screwed. I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> But, yeah. like, I played yesterday with um, Bjor, and he was pretty aggressive and had some good combat cards. And I was able to slap red cubes on pretty quick, but you'll yeah. never know unless you, yeah, you try. Yeah, I'm definitely going to draw my three cards in. But just remember, you, you might, know. after, you, you could play a couple turns, but you might get hit for, like, one. Then you might get hit for three. You so don't like, get hit for three. Yeah, and I'm your health, strong. you're at eight. <laughs> Run, Forrest, run! <laughs> okay, well, I'm definitely going to draw my cards first. Anyways, okay. Because one, two, three. So, oh, look at all those cubes on that card. Oh, boy, what is it called? Surprise attack! Yeah. Okay. And look, when you play it, you draw a card right away. You don't even have to wait. And that can, let's see what connects. So, playing this card, uh, do you have practicality? Yes. yes. So, you get one red cube. Yeah. You could spend a magic. But I, oh, and I don't get that one. And this blocks, yeah. Okay, so he hold blocks on. Your Let's first, see if I can He's like that defending better. your first easy hit. Let's see. But that would have to be... I wouldn't be able to yeah, play another card Yeah, because it has no bonuses. That. So this is definitely a first, a starter card for sure. And I would get two. But then what does it have down the bottom? A two-timeser. So if you played... You get a card right away. And then you could play... That does nothing, that does nothing. But maybe but the, card, maybe the card you draw... Card. Or you can leave this out and let them go. And then when it comes back to you, you, you remember you discard down a three and then you draw a new card. He would have two cubes, so then he would lose two? Yes, he would just revert. But at least at least it doesn't do damage to you. So that's a good spot to sit on. Yeah. I don't know. You're not getting damaged at least. No health is gone. Mm -hmm. If you want. Your call. <laughs> He's lost <laughs> Run very rapidly. Okay. <laughs> hey, Alan, how's it going? <laughs> All right, so we're going to put that in. So we are going to do the two. You're going to have to spend a magic to give one? Oh, no, it's only, oh, that would only be one, so he would do one damage. I forgot, because this is... You can spend a magic. No, I don't want to spend a magic. <laughs> I don't want to do this. You could just run. He's not a guard, so he won't stick around. So let's double check. I think you don't have to match keys on your first card of your turn, right? Yeah, there's no requirements. But we're just trying to line them up uh, to get the bonuses the best we can. And then we're already talking about playing a second card before even putting down the first. Because they have all the keys on the right side, you literally, that first card, don't slap it down willy-nilly, unless you're panicked, of course. But play it very strategically because you're trying to make combos and chain cards together on your turn by connecting those bonus key symbols. So never put down that first card not worrying about what's on the right and what has connected currently because you kind of have to plan out how many red cubes you're getting in your combat pool because especially on a guy like this, that could be the difference between one damage against you or, t or three damage or cards getting discarded, all that stuff. So it can get very hairy if you do it all wrong. So you really have to plan out your turn and only with experience, I'm sure, after we play again and again with the same 15 cards and you start mixing in ones, you're going to get very good and know what to mulligan for. So you could oh, yeah, mulligan. I could mulligan, but I'm only getting two cards. But I'm just thinking, because none of these cards will connect and help me. You could just play this, draw a card, get a red cube, see what happens. And maybe you get something that connects to it. Maybe you don't and you just leave it there. Worst case, you're just taking one damage. I take one damage and then I can run away. Or just run now. This is silly. But you don't know what you're going to draw into. But you'll know. Hold on. Where, when can you run? Right here. Let's look on the combat overview. Mm. I don't see where it says exactly where to put your tail between your legs and run. So let's just double check in the combat in the manual. Just looking at stuff here. This is just me playing. I'm not doing anything. Yeah, yeah. Just trying to see. Ba, 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 ba. That one is... Oh, that actually works out not terrible. Oh, okay, here. Escaping combat. A player may escape at any time during their activation. They lose one energy. 
and trigger the opportunity attack listed on the encounter card. Then they place the encounter card on the bottom of his deck, reshuffle their combat deck, and set it aside. That's easy peasy. So, if you oh, want to do that, do I it. I can't play another one. Oh, if you're I saying... did it that way, then I would get... Let's see, why can't you? Because uh, I can't... could if you spend a magic. Oh, I don't know that I want to do that. That's How hard thing. is it to get magic? Uh, uh, I know I can do it with an ability, but I don't see it on the board anywhere. That would do one, two, three, four. That would do four damage if I'm looking at that correctly. Right here? Yeah, so this would let me... This is my free card. Okay. Oh, but then you but can't, then play, can't this play this one. Card. Yeah, yeah, this one's oh, a starter. We okay. talked about this. Yeah, duh, duh, duh. <laughs> <sighs> you could just play this one, put a cube on him. Draw a card and see what happens. All right, let's do and that. And then you can still escape after that. Okay, let's do that. Okay, let's just try to see what happens. Let's look at your. Let's take this as a learning looking through your deck. Probably not the best enemy to oh, learn on, but so then I take one damage, right? Hold on. No. Oh no, I draw a card first. Hold on. Let's go down the card. We're checking the keys. Does this one connect? No. Does this one? Yes. Do you have um, practicality? I do. Red cube. Here. Do you want to pay a magic to gain a red cube? No. Down here. The X cancels that red cube. Then you do the ability on the card. It is a play right away, so you draw a card. Okay. And it has bonus keys. So this is another option you could possibly play now. So let's just see if it... But the only one, yeah. the only way to play it is to spend a magic. The only way to play any of those is to spend a magic. You could just stop right there yep. and let him go where he will just damage you for one. Yeah. Do you want to do that? Yeah. Okay. So he goes, he looks in his table, zero to one, red cubes, one damage. Okay. Okay. Now, or sorry, end of your turn, discard down to three, mm -hmm. draw one card. Then he goes, now it's back to you, start of your turn, go. This is interesting. Final blow. So you got blow. final blow. See, it's the same cards that I have in my deck. I think these generic ones are all the same for everybody, but I could be wrong. So if I did this... As my free card. Let's just pretend for yep. a minute so I can count that out. That would be So go down two. in order. I would get that. Do you have an aggression? Yes. Okay, so you get two red cubes. But I'm just kind of playing it That's out. That's fine. Sure. We're okay, going to we're gonna actually walk through it all. So then you see. I don't want to pay magic, but then I can get two more. Okay, two more red cubes because the free key is multiplying your bonus by two. Yes. Okay. So that's two, Now four, you five. do the ability if it was a play right away, but it's not. So right now you know if the enemy goes, you're going to lose two red cubes and they're going to do an extra damage oh, to you. Oh, but look at this. Look at this. Tell There's nothing to connect anything to. Yeah, because it's final blow. So it's super risky if One, you don't two, finish three, them four, off. Five. Oh, we do three damage. No, we're not doing that. We're not yeah, doing so, that. Rewind. So. so save it till it's your final blow. So you literally only have one red cube still there, right? Yeah. Okay. So, but I could do something else as a... Sure. Uh, is there anything um, cool to times two on the bottom? Nope, they're all black. That sucks. You could... Play that, and on the next turn you lose red and draw two cards. Remember, you're going to discard down to three at the end of your turn and draw a card. And right now he's still only doing one damage to you. You could just play cards to try to build up connections to get stuff ready and going. Look at the abilities, though, because remember, whatever you drop down could leave an ability out. But remember, you can't prevent his damage. So this prevent two damage yeah. doesn't do anything because he has faint. I think you're okay to take some hits still, but... Just got to be careful. These cards all feel like they're exactly the same. Not all of them are exactly the same, but very similar here. So this one, losing a red cube and drawing two on your next turn isn't the worst to leave that down. Because then you add three cards in hand. You wouldn't have to discard. You get to draw one. And then at the start of the turn, you remove that time token. And then you draw two cards. But this goes away. But I mean, that is the same because zero and one are the same one damage. Oh, okay, yeah. But remember, you're trying to build up to a final blow. It's basically, you got the final piece here. Yeah. You just have to, it might take a few turns to get to it. So I could do that, like sure. you say. And there's no attributes to connect. No. You're going to put a time token on that card because the ability requires it. But you still can cover that up and get rid of that time token right now if you want to play another card. Okay. Uh, no, I think we'll do we'll do that and try because I'll get, I'll get to draw a card at the start of my turn plus draw two more cards. So I'd have three more cards. Sorry, I wasn't listening. I was reading the That's card. okay, that's okay. <laughs> so if I leave this like this, I would take one damage. So, no, this. no, no. 
end your turn, you would discard down to three cards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, That's no, all. no. Don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We need to make sure we're doing this order because I keep forgetting too. I wasn't really talking about the order. I was just talking about how many cards I'm going to oh, have okay. in my hand. I thought you were asking what's all going to happen. No, so. no, no. Okay. Uh, so I would draw a card because I would discard down, but I don't need to. Draw a card. Yes. Then I would remove this and draw two more cards. You would lose the red cube from yeah. here. Then you would draw two cards. Yes. Yeah. So I'd have six cards in my hand. Sure. Okay, let's try. Sounds awesome, right? It's like, kind of like what happened on my turn, right? And then you have all these options and you kind of like take 20 minutes to put the puzzle together and yeah. then pfft, one shot. Okay. But he's up to nine health, so good luck. But you do have final blow there, so it could all work out. All right, so you're ending your activation. You're good? Correct. That's what you're going to leave as your active ability? Yes. So now discard down to three cards. I'm good. Okay, draw a card. Uh, now he's going to go and do his, he checks here. Now he's going to do one damage to you. Okay. Okay. Now you go back to here, remove time tokens and do abilities. So we're going to lose a red cube. And you're going to draw two cards. Okay, so I drew on my turn, I drew super attack or surprise attack, excuse me. Nice, that's so a good starting that's card. That's got lots of cards there. Yep, that's a good starting one. And then so I think that's what you had here was surprise attack too. Oh. I think that's oh. the first one you played, right? Yeah. Okay, and then I just drew these guys. Throw. Throw, oh, that sounds good too. So you drew a whole bunch that are good for red cubes as long as you have the stuff to connect them. Okay, so if I did. This just for ex let's surprise see. attack. I would be able to connect. So you use the two at the top because you have courage and you have practicality. Yeah. So that's two red. Plus two. The more. magic doesn't connect, so you don't have to worry about that red cube. Plus two times. So that's four cubes total laying on him. Okay. But then you're in the range of taking three damage. Can you get it to six to eight where you'd only lose two damage and you take away one, one red cube? Can oh, you again? Get him up to six? Oh, yes, because then I can do this. If you can get him to nine, you can kill him. Then I can do this. Because you're connecting the free key. Yes. Okay, so hold on. Let's drop all that stuff. Yep. So four. Four in the pool. Okay, so he only needs five more. Okay. And this ability is if you escape from combat, ignore the opportunity attack. Okay. So you can run now. Run. Go. <laughs> hold on. Now I'm good. Yeah, yeah. See? It's the gamble. You gotta. It's the risk versus reward situation. Uh, not that one yet. Okay, I think I can do then this one. All right, so we're gonna go down the top. So you can, do you have aggression? You yes. have one. So yes, you can connect that bonus key, so you're allowed to play this card beyond the first one. Okay. You I'll then look at spirituality. Yes, yes you connect that, so you get a red cube. Practicality. Practicality, sorry. Yeah. And then I don't wanna pay magic. Okay, so then and you then... get one times another red cube. Yep. So you're now at six. Okay. Can you final blow them? Final blow. Does it have it? No, because you don't have all the other stuff to connect to. Hold on. No, but then I was going to connect this one. I think it was this one. Hold on. Did that last one have any immediate effect? Oh. Yes, it did. Oh, shoot. I didn't even... Yeah. So tell me what that ability says. Uh, so immediately flip over one weapon or shield. I only have a helmet. Oh, we forgot about that. But no, I know I have it. I knew I had oh, okay. it, but it hasn't Prevent come into it yet. Okay. Um, Sorry. Flip over one weapon or shield you're using to gain... Two red cubes. This item is inactive until the end of combat. Oh, you're good. But I'm good. Okay. Okay. So then I was going to play sorry. this. Yep. So that one connects because you have. Oh, but no, I have to have you two. You don't have two practicality. Oh, son of a gun. So okay, you have to hold rewind on. or. Um, Freaking final blow drop in there yet. Nope. Maybe you play that one instead of the last one. So we have to undo what? One red cube? Two red cubes? Two. Yeah. Hold on. So if I did that one first. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, I can do that one first. Yeah, because that connects practicality. Whoops. Okay. So, oh, that didn't matter anyways. Yeah. Now, have you lined up? So you have four. Oh, but... Well, now you're getting three more cubes. Three more cubes. Because there's a times two, right? Hold on, hold on. But then final blow will only get you one more. So that would give you three plus four. So you'd be at eight. Which is fine. He's one away. And then maybe next turn you just drop... No, but I have this one too. Oh, that Is there not a way you can get more off final blow? Hold on. If you're taking cards off, let me know so we can remove the red cube. No, no, no. Can you connect that one? I think you can. I can connect that one, yeah. Okay. Any of them have play effects? Nope. No. Okay. So you connect that one. Okay. That doesn't do anything. But then I would be able to connect... Throw this one, yep. which would then do those one, one two, two three. three. Okay, so I'll put those here. So we're now at seven, and then final blow for two more. And you got two more in there? Oh, no, because of X. <laughs> 
But he's at seven. So look, he's in that spot where you'll just take two damage and you'll lose a red cube out of here. And okay, then, and then I'll keep this in my hand. And you're hoping. But this is that flip over weapon one, so we don't yeah, need to worry about that. I don't need to worry Okay, about so let's try that. Okay. So now you discard down to three. Okay. So first, oh, sorry. End of your turn, you check. Is he dead? No, no. he's not dead. Okay. So now discard down to three. Okay, I'm good. Draw a card. Okay. That looks nice. That's good. Okay. Then he will go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So he is going to do two damage to you. One, two. And lose one red cube out of here. So okay. you're down to six again. Okay. Here we go. And now and you I can play whatever card you want. But remember, this red X is there. Now do I... I'm so sorry. I forget already. I draw cards, right? Nope, you already no, did that. I already did. Okay, so this is all I got. Yep. Okay, so I could play this for free. Uh, That's my starting yes, card. Yes, for sure. Yep, there's and no And then I can play this, which would then kill him. Hold on. Uh, so let's walk through it, though. Yeah. You have aggression. Yes. So two red cubes. Okay, what else? Tell me more. You uh, tell me what's happening. Then that is letting me play the card. I'm not paying any magic. And then two more times. Two times, Two times red cubes yeah. on the free key. Yes. Bang, bang. So that's three, six, nine, ten. So now you stop and you check that whole, uh, whatever, the health check thing. What's it called? It actually has a name. Uh, Wasn't it like uh, a... Victory check. Oh, victory check. Okay. So we check victory. You have okay. more than nine when he has. So he is defeated. You'll gain one wealth and one item. Okay. Which is... Right here. Tell us what you got. Show the camera. I'll help okay, you. I got Adventures Kit. It's got a C on it. What does that mean? That's craftable. But oh, that's fine. Okay, okay. That just means uh, there's a guy in the game that can craft items, and, and sometimes you can get craftable items, which you just search for the deck to look for ones with C, but that's just an item deck too. Okay, so uh, ignore the effects of heavy rainfall and unnatural chill events. <laughs> okay, sure. Oh, did you you didn't explore anything there yet, right? You just you just no. did the whole automatic. Okay. Yeah. yeah, so it would cost an extra to explore there. So then these get shuffled back in? Yep. Whoa, that was a lot. But that's combat. But now you, now to, you know what I you're capable to know of. How that worked, yeah. You so. now know you're capable of smashing a nine health guy if you get the cards right. <laughs> and everyone told me to <laughs> well run. Done, no. I know that's why <laughs> no, I'm saying I'm just try saying, just to know. see. But I did lose a lot of health. Yep. But you know you can go here to get two, two back, yeah. and just eating food at the end of the day, you get one automatically too. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh. So, but here, oh no, here I had to spend. I have to spend two, right, to explore there. Right now, because it's dense mists out, you would have to spend an extra to explore there. Okay, yes. so I'm going to do that. I'm going to spend two, going to three. Okay. And I'm going to explore there. Uh, so this is 104, the Charred Conclave. It doesn't take long to find it. You just have to follow your nose. The remnants of an enormous wicker man kneel, kneel at the bottom of a small veil. You were here when it was set alight years ago. The day was wet. The wicker man smoldered but didn't burn. Its victims, dozens of tightly packed druids, are still inside. Their melted faces and charred beards pressed against the bars and looking toward the gray, silent skies. Barely audible, ceaseless whispers seem to fill the air. That's gross. If you're playing Maggot, or if he's in your party, go to verse 10. Oh, so if I was there. Oh. Okay, okay. So because you're not with me specifically. So I'm not going to verse 10. So okay. otherwise, choose one. Okay. Stay a while and listen. Go to verse 1. Dig through the remains. Go to verse 2. Or leave while your sanity remains intact. Exploration ends. So do you want to stay a while and listen, or do you want to dig through the remains? Um, if... I remember what you read before. They said something was buried in the burnt flesh or something. Oh, that was in the dream. I don't know. It's just okay, saying I would like to dig. Dig through the remains. Go to verse 2. You hum a joyful song and to drown out the whispers and get to work. Prying apart half-melted bodies is grim and foul work. But you do find some valuables that were locked away with the unfortunate druids. If you don't have part one of the pillager status, gain... One random non-companion item and part one of the pillager status. So we don't have pillager, right? No. So gain part one of the pillager. Yeah, sorry. And I think we missed something. They were saying that we should have explored. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Sorry. Sorry about that. Uh, yes, We were so you. excited about the combat. Yeah, yeah. Because that would happen after that in encounter, right? Yeah. Uh, we're looking for 109? Yes. Uh, the Island Asylum. Oh, Look at that. You can have a dream there. It's an isle <laughs> from the dream. 
Uh, you can heal healing rights there by spending an energy to pay one wealth and gain three health. There you well, go. Well, they knew that I was going to have to fight that crazy the place, monster. The place where humans first set foot on the island is now the last departure point for their sick. Oh, that's so cool. Okay. And I'm so sorry. You told me what we just got and I went right through. What did we Pillager, get? Pillager, part one. Pillager, part one. Okay. Okay. And also, you're going to gain a random non-companion item. Wow. Look so at we're going to look here. First one's a companion. You don't get that. Okay. Here you go. Pretty petty trinkets, I think. Petty trinkets. So for one energy, gain one wealth for each point of practicality and discard the and discard this item only in settlements. So you save it, but gain one wealth for each point of your practicality. So if I spend one energy. So you're basically selling the petty trinkets at a settlement. Oh, I see. Using one energy. I see. Okay, and then that's the that's the card size right that's there. Cool. That's cool. Yeah, just hold it away a little bit. All yeah. Right. So okay. you just hold that down there, and it's an optional action you can now do with yep. your energy. And only in settlements I can do only that. Only in settlements. Okay. All right. Each party member who has more than one empathy, which is you, yep. gains one terror. Ah. Because <laughs> you're seeing dead bodies, and you chose so to I just go, ignore them. I go up one. Yep, you go up a terror. Okay. I'm scared See, if you it. had no empathy and you just didn't care like I did. That's why I was saying it was better for you. Oh, well, probably, yeah. You're right. I knew. Okay, and exploration ends. Oh, <laughs> So I'm going to go there, and I can go there from here, because they're connected. Okay. So, but not this day. On another day, I will go there. Sorry, I have one more I could use. But exploring costs two energy, but if I it's could not move a settlement. somewhere to be prepared, right? Uh, you can stay there to do the dream. You could travel down here. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. And just end there and have that dream. This is, okay. What was that island? Did they, oh man, no. Nah. I don't know. You'll have to dream here again to find out. <laughs> okay, I'm going to use my one, en one energy to move here. Okay, cool. So we're ending the day. We're resting? Yeah. Okay, so rest. You can eat one food optionally. Yes, I will do that. To heal a health. Yes, I will do and that. And lose a terror, which yes, I will do. I will do that. Do. Okay. Now we restore our energy to full because we ate. Perfect. And if you were exhausted, you only restore up to four energy. Nope, I was not. All right. Advance your character by spending experience. I still only have one. Also, you have one, so we yeah. can't afford any of that. We're not going to modify our deck. Now we're going to do the dreams in our locations. Let me start. Okay, you have to flip your coin. Flip in a coin. And I get to oh. do the dream. Yay. Uh, so it's the whitening stream. Yep, 107. 107. Your dream of home is understandable, considering for the first time in your life you wandered so far from it. But why is everyone talking and walking backward? <laughs> That's it. That's all? That's it. Okay, all right, so what's yours? 109. 109. <laughs> uh, oh, they all can't be winners. Dream and a nightmare. Oh, no, all together. I'm on the asylum island. There are no real dreams in this place. The sleep is as cold and silent as the rocks of the island. Considering how much pain and death they've seen, perhaps that's a blessing. Dark. Very dark. That was it? Yep, that's okay. it. All right. So what else we got to do? Uh, if you're going insane, read the nightmare. Nope. Uh, that's that. So start of day. So we're going to remove expired menus. And there are none. Remove, remove time. time markers. Then we're going to uh, tick down our menu dial to four. Oh, no. Oh, the number's getting low. That one we got to think about activating another menu. But we need to get those menu rights. We need that card. Yep, we need the menu rights. Secret card or whatever it said. Uh, all right. And reveal the next event card. Hopefully we get some good weather. Good weather! <laughs> <laughs> your first travel today costs oh, one less. Oh, and they said remember to turn the dial on your secret item. Ah, uh, thank you. Start of the day. Oh, yes, because that's part of that time dial stuff. I forgot about this thing being here. Yep. Thank Thanks, you. Guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So we brought you on our... Adventure. I know I remember later when I looked at it and meant, oh, why is that there? Yeah, let me keep it up there so I try to remember it. So your first travel today costs one less energy. Woo! Experienced journeymen know how to make the most of decent weather while it lasts. Beautiful. Okay? So today is good weather. Maybe the I the won't, fog is gone. Maybe I won't need, as they said in there, I want a poncho. 
I might you want to poncho? Well, it's not. Ignore the effects of heavy rainfall. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe I won't have to use my poncho today. Awesome. We've got good weather out. Okay. All right. And then we're going to move guardians and then pick an active, pick your active and item secret cards. So that pick your active and item secret cards is literally, you're looking for each type, but you're good because there's no, you have no types. So I think you're good. So is this not a type or this is a helmet, right? Because it says it's a helmet. I don't we haven't looked. What were the I, types again? It was like, uh. Wasn't it like helmet and we just probably said it as we say it in other games, but yeah, it's just like all your equipment. Yeah. Uh, hold on. I know there's a nice little list. Does it just say, or is there a symbol on them? Start or? of day. See items. Okay, one sec. Items, items, items. Oh, weapon, armor, shield. Companion or relic. I don't think you have any. Okay. Because even the companion one that I drew had above here had companion like in a trait. Oh, okay. In a okay. separate little box. So I have nothing that so, yeah, I have to worry about. I think we're good. About. I okay. think we're good. So you're free to have that stuff all equipped. Okay. So all it's like is you're getting ready for the day because you can only wear so much stuff and then you go out adventuring. You can't change before a battle, but you can change if you get something new or you lose something. You can switch from if you have like a oh, pool, if you, like if you have like a pool of five swords. You can pick your sword at the start of the day. Then if you lose one, you can equip another sword before you go into the next fight. Kind of idea. And when I get something, can I change it yes. for what I have? I'm pretty sure put? that's the only time you can change it, is when something forces you to change it up. I'm pretty sure, but okay. we'll we can deal with that, that when if, if when, when it comes there, up. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. We so need to find this card though. Yeah. So that's that. Okay. So now we're starting a new day. Uh, let's. Do it. Oh, yeah. This guy should be on the bottom of this deck. I just have this card over here. Right. So remember our quest. Earn the menu rights secret card. To do so, you'll have to explore locations surrounding Quinnot. Mm -hmm. Success. As soon as you have menu rights, blah, blah, blah. Okay. You explored this one, right? Uh, a little bit, but little I bit. think there's more to do there. But now I want to go down here because it, it's. I'm going to do this because... Oh, yeah, because this is better for you. Yeah, because it said if you had maggot, jump to whatever. Okay, so I want to find ahead. out. Okay. So, Vinyl Rabbit says, hey, hey. Hey, Vinyl Rabbit, how's it going? <laughs> All right, so because it's good weather, I'm going to uh, travel, travel for, free? For, for free. I'll draw a gray encounter once per day. Maybe so, yours will be easier than so mine. So time token. Okay. So now if I move through there, I wouldn't have to do Correct. that. Correct. Beautiful. Right, because it says once per day. Yeah. A wandering priestess. One. This is, what? It's, I never, what is this? It's, it's missing stuff. A, is this a typo? <laughs> How does right. get so lucky? She believes ancient customs will protect her on the trail. You know it's only a matter of time before she's proven wrong. Each party member may decide to pay one wealth or one food to gain three health. What? Pay one wealth or one food. Oh, I man. totally would have done that if I got that card. Do we yeah. need wealth for both men here? So those two at the top? Um... We need wealth for this one. Both of them, yeah. Yes. Two wealth for this one, one yeah, wealth. Yeah, we need so, them for all of them. But... You have enough wealth to cover me on the cheaper one, this one, right? Yep, there's two that... Uh, and we have enough magic yeah. if we don't spend magic for it. I could cover you... Oh, because it's per player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I could spend wealth. I don't have any... F I only have one food for today. Yeah, me too. So, I do I have food. enough? Hold on. Do I have enough? Uh, I don't need health. Oh, may decide to. May decide. Yeah, you don't have to. Oh. You don't need. You don't even need help. She's selling me healing. I, I don't need to buy it. Yeah, I'm okay. not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. Sorry. I, I read it as like I thought I had to. Yeah, May. Uh, we're good. So that's it. So it's gone. <laughs> that's lucky, cool. I didn't know that was possible lucky. not to have... It's gray, right? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know it was possible to not have a fight. Yeah, that's what this that's one That's cool. Too. So cool not all the Yeah, not battles. all that's encounters cool. are battles. I'm blown away. I'm blown away. Because it doesn't hint at that at all in any of the rules or anything. Yeah. So that's a nice little surprise. Yeah. Spoiler. All right. <laughs> that's level well, one. I'm also... sure. I'm sure once you get like level three and four, that th th doesn't happen anymore. Or it just does something really bad to you and then like walks away. Dude <laughs> yeah, comes yeah. up, stabs you in gut, walks away. <laughs> <laughs> you lie there bleeding. <laughs> Lose health. Uh, all right. So I will explore uh, for one. Are you okay with that? Yeah. All right. So I'm exploring 104. Where you've explored once already. Yep. So let's try to bust through this little little maze of text and verses. So if I'm playing Maggot, go to verse 10. 
The lipless mouths sneer at you. The melted fingers seem to beckon and call you. An angry whisper grows like the sound of the sea. Finally, you realize they want you to come inside. The steps behind the card bars where the black arms and melted fingers may close around you into place where your life should have ended with theirs. Because I'm a druid and I didn't die in there. Interesting. Go inside is one option. It requires maggot or at least one spirituality, which I have both. <laughs> Go to verse 4. Or put your ear to the bars and gather what you can from here. Go to verse 5. You Did you do verse 5? No, you didn't do verse 5, I don't think. You went digging for two. Yeah, you just went to two. Okay, I just want to make sure like I'm not doing the same things you did. Mm -hmm. um, put your ears to the bars and gather what you can or leave and exploration ends. Go inside requires maggot. Well, it requires maggot, so I'm just going to do it. Yeah, because it's like something that's for you. It's made for you. It could be very bad because there are druids that are dying and they could say I hate you and want to rip out my eyeballs all right verse four missed that one. First paragraph under the they're just talking about how that not all encounters are battles was in the rule book oh it is in the rule book oh okay but yeah I glazed really over probably, that yeah it's... I, I just don't expect little easy easy tips like that uh the game to have that that's cool all right so you're going to dig in or you're going verse in? four yes that's what I'm looking for okay you break some of the bars open and step inside, choking on the foul smell. Closer, a voice in your head says. You lie between the charred carcasses and feel their arms wrap around you. Closer, the voice repeats, and hands begin to pull you in. So I can try to break myself free, go to verse 8, or lay still, and each party member will lose one health and gain one terror. And then, if you have the charred knowledge status, go to verse 5, which I don't. Otherwise, go to... And then otherwise I could go to this where I put dials out to find a secret passage in the book of secrets in the back. So automatically <laughs> because of that, I'm going there just for the fun of the video. I would probably try to break myself free if I was playing and I was serious and I cared. But I want to have some fun here for you guys. So I'm going to go to lay still. I'm going to lay with these bodies that are reap, reap these carcasses that are grabbing and pulling at me and telling me to come closer. Uh, so each party member loses a health for the good of the stream. And gain a terror, because I'm a little scared, just a little. But I can go up to like five terror before going insane, so I'm good. Uh, if you have the charge knowledge status, go to verse five, which I don't, right? We mm. didn't get charge knowledge, right? No. Okay. Uh, otherwise, go to, and let's do the secrets. So we're going to get three dials. And I'll do it here. I'm sure you guys can't see exactly, but this is how you do it. So I got to put the skulls lined up the same way they are in the book. This is how they hide secrets from you. Oh, and then it's a number? Yeah. So the number is one, one, one. <laughs> but sometimes they're obviously facing different ways and stuff. Yeah. Uh, so one, one, one. So I jump back to the book of secrets. I look for this BOS in the top. And then I quickly try to find 101 and don't read anything else. Although I'm probably sure it wouldn't make sense to me if I were to read the wrong thing. All right. One, one, one says deformed fingers dig into your skin. So yeah, I think I'm in the right spot. Bodies push from all sides, nearly crushing your ribs. Charred lips whisper into your ears. The pain is immense, but after a while you understand they are not looking to punish you. They want to pass on the knowledge lost with them. Each party member loses a health and gains an experience. Ooh. Well, that's good. Sort of. Gain secret card 11 if you don't have it yet and gain the charred knowledge status. So that stops me from doing this again by having that status. Secret card 11. So the secret cards don't come in order when you get the game, but we put them in order because playing Mansion of the Madness, they recommend you do that to find them quicker. And we do that to keep the stream flowing. I think it says that in the book too, sort them out. Um, but they aren't numbered like one, two, three, four, all the way to the end of the amount of secret cards. There's lots of space, just like the unlocked games, the escape oh, room games. Okay. And the reason they do that is so you don't mistakenly grab one number off because they're far apart. Like oh, you'll see I all see. of a sudden it jumps from like 66 to 73. So they did that. So don't think you got a misprint or something if you're missing cards, um, if you're missing numbers. So secret card 11. Let me right. figure out what these secret cards are. Oh, did that say it was a secret? Yeah, it was a secret card, right? I'm, I'm ready. No, 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 I know. I'm sorry. Go ahead. What's go ahead. happening? What are you stopping me for? No, no, no. You're killing me. I want to see what the secret is. Why am I stopping? Yeah, this is a secret card that we need. 
Flipping number 11. Men are your rights. There, there we, we go. go. Okay, wow. Okay. <laughs> I don't Should know why you're stopping me. Like Because I was like, all of a sudden it clicked in that, that this could be it. that's oh, okay. where we find these things. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> For the rest of this, I'm playing solo. Don't worry, guys. We won't have her here stopping me from finding out. No, I didn't know no, where we found them. I'm just kidding. It's funny how it all clicks. It's like, all of a sudden. I feel like a parent with a little kid who's like learning all of a sudden. It's like, aha. And you get that proud like dad moment. Like, oh, she finally got it. Or a teacher. I feel like a teacher teaching students, you know? I got it. It's okay. <laughs> all right. <laughs> it's all good. You can now activate menus. Uh, the cost of this action can be found on the back of each location with a menu symbol. No Sweet. crap. Okay, so that's all it does is just let us so we activate menus. Um, okay, there's more here. Congratulations! You've completed your first quest. You now know what to wake... Uh, how to wake, sorry, the ancient menus. When you finish a quest, make sure to always follow the instructions in the success section of your quest card. New task. Make a note. Okay, I'm ready. Tasks are not reminded on cards anywhere. They recommend you make notes in the in the rule book for them. Or actually in this journal, it reminds you to take notes for it. Okay. Get to a location with a menu icon and activate it before your time runs out. No crap. I don't think any. No crap. <laughs> Thanks, Captain Obvious. Exploration ends. So I'll get out of the book, it says. All okay. Right. So that that's... is so cool. I love this game now. I am 103% hooked now. <laughs> Not just 100%. 103% hooked. It's got me. All right. Okay. So uh, that so was me. To... I only literally used one energy already. That's awesome. Yeah, because oh. the one move was free. Okay. Well, do we have enough to go up yeah, to Menier so... Town? Oh, I'm stuck. We're going to do the white one, I think, right? The uh, the cheapest one was if we want to use energy. Do you have three energy, though, if you get there to spend? I could become exhausted for such an action. I feel like that warrants one it. One health. But we still have time. Energy. We still have time. So, like, we can... Yeah, but I would love to do another one and see what happens. You'd love to do another one what? Activate. Oh, sorry. Here. Let's finish our quest. Oh, yeah, yeah. Success. As soon as you have many rights, resolve the Chapter 1 Part 5 card from the event deck and discard this card. Remember not to change the structure of the rest of the deck. Okay, so we're discarding this card, and we're going to do card number 5. Oh, so it changes our... Taking this out, skipping some cards, obviously. Because see, if we kept taking more time, right, we start going through the deck. And... But now, this one is still active, right, or no? Oh, this is a quest card. Yeah, this is still a good weather is happening. Yes, yes, I yes. Because I haven't gone yet. Yeah, so. I'm just throwing okay. this in the discard okay, okay. pile. Sure. Just making sure that this new one doesn't take over yeah, for that Yeah, because this is also an event card, right? Yeah. So, no, no. Okay. I, I would assume that's the weather, still the weather. Okay. Um, okay, chapter one, part five. A journey begins. It literally begins now. I felt like it began a while ago. All right. <laughs> Place this card on top of the active quest pile. Despite your best efforts to learn and perform the ancient rite, the men here in your town seems beyond your help. Disheartened, you realize your only hope is to try to enable one of the two statues from nearby locations, which we're trying to work towards. Quest. Activate a men here in one of the nearby locations, the Four Dweller Mounds or the Whitening. Okay. Okay. Success. When you activate one of these men here, resolve the Chapter 1, Part 6 of the event deck and discard this card. Okay. So it seems like that's what we need to do to move this story along anyway. Okay. So I mean, have, I can meet you we there. We have four-ish days. Um, but... What was the other one? Because maybe we do this one so we don't have to waste magic. Well, that one That's was... That's my other thought. That one was a little more expensive. That one was two energy wealth, right? each, two wealth, two health, and two magic. Oh, sorry. Excuse me. Excuse me. That was this one. 107 was three health, one... Sorry. Three energy, one health, one wealth, one magic. For 106 is what I want to know. It's one energy each, one health each, two wealth each. Yes. Which we don't have enough. And one but, food. But so. I could go here... Pay food to gain a wealth. Then I can... Oh, but then I have to do a blue encounter when I go there. But why do you not want to pay magic? We have magic. I can make magic, so it's fine. It's just you make us pay an extra magic, which is annoying. So even on this one, you're going to make us pay a magic, which is oh. annoying. But that's fine. I just want to pay less magic is all I'm trying to do. But I want to see what else we... We have to pay more wealth. That's the trade-off. And some food. So the problem is I would have to like go this way which is one, go this way, pay two to gain food, then next turn, go here, gain a terror, pay two energy to gain wealth and all this fluff, when we could just go here and get it over with. Mm -hmm. But then we're out magic and some stuff, whatever. I'll just use energy to gain magic another day. 
In fact, I'll gain magic right now, if you're yeah. okay with that. Sure. One, two. So I'll do my ability to gain one magic, two energy. Then I will just move up here, spending one last energy, and that's me. Go ahead. Okay. So... Do you need to do some draw healing here? A blue encounter card. Do, do I was just thinking about that because I don't have to do an encounter card here, Correct. but I will have to do a blue encounter card. Oh, will you have to do a blue encounter card? Oh, Can you just move there? Yes, thank you. Uh, yeah, draw a blue encounter. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, so sick, a slick fraudster. It's two. Oh, higher green tr thing here, and it's two stages. And the reward is one rep, two wealth. Failure, lose three wealth and one rep. And I can avoid it right now. But it requires two caution, which I don't have, and resolve the season warrior gray encounter instead. But I'm not going to do that, obviously. Hmm. Yeah. Um. Okay. Once in a lifetime bargain. So reveal forgery or trick the trickster. Oh, you get to choose. You either have him moving it down twice or moving it down once and discarding. And then, oh, I see. If I have spirituality and caution, I pick this one. If I have empathy, I pick this one. So I'll pick the top, reveal forgery. Okay. Oh, and that just tells you how you play. Yep. Okay, I see, I see. So I'm going to do it over here, actually. Let me sure. move that card. Uh, yeah, I want to do it over here in front of me. Okay, so uh, let's shuffle up a little bit here. Okay, one, two, three. All right, I got mind trick, rhetoric, and commanding tone. Uh, so this is the passive one. Toss a dial on down, on a skull it goes down, on a grail it goes up. So let's put a cube on here in the gray. And if it hits that red, I lose. So yeah. if I pick this first one, if I don't move it up right now, the enemy will automatically make me fail it. And I'll lose three wealth, which I only have one, and one rep. But that's, like, whatever, I'll lose two red cubes. Not the worst, but if I try to escape, I feel like the failure still happens. Yes, the failure still happens on, on these. So I'm going to try to win. Okay. What the heck? This one moves it down and up if I pay magic. Pay one charge and draw two cards. But you could do that on an X. And then oh, you move yeah. it down. All right, so let's see this. Uh, so it would go up, but then I toss a 50 50 and it could go right back down. Oh, you have to do that right away? Yeah. Oh, I see. And well, I do this stuff first. So I could pay a magic to make it go up and then the free key up. Because that would connect. Yeah. And so. then you could toss it and it could go up again. So I'm going to do it. But it could also go down. Could. Okay. So I'll play mind trick, I think. Let me just double check here. that I can play this after. Nope. This one I can play because I have spirituality after. And it doesn't go down, which is kind of cool. Then yeah. I gain two charges. And then I can pay a charge to draw two cards. Hmm... Mm, yeah, let's do that. So, uh, okay. So first I'll check down here. I'll, I'll pay the magic. All that work for magic. And it's gone just like that. All right, up one. Then I get the free bump up because of the free key. Now I'm going to toss a dial. Chalice. So, or the grail, sorry. That goes up again. I'm one away from winning. On the first card. So good. All right, and uh, bruh. so what was saying? I could connect this one. Yeah, because now it won't go down. Yeah, it won't go down because this blocks that bonus because the free key has a red X. Then I'll gain two charges when I play it. Uh, I will pay one charge. Oh, but then it goes down and I draw two cards. Or if I keep going... I can't connect this one. So you need to draw the cards. Or I just stop right here. Yeah. Uh, what and if happens? I do that, it goes down twice. goes down twice. No. Let's get risky. Yeah. I'll pay one charge. Yeah. 
it goes down, but then I draw two cards, wrong deck, eye for detail, and flash of insight. Ooh, that's creepy. Whoa, he's looking right at me. All right, so I can connect this one because the free one at the bottom. And then, what does this do for me? What does this do for me? Does I could pay a magic to draw a card. And then if I do this one, I have a uh, caution. So then I would get to move it up twice. Bang, bang, win. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I will do that. Whoops. We have to spend the magic, right, in order to do Nope. That? Oh, because it's a free one. The first card that you put down is your first free. First one card. I put yep. down free. Yep. Don't care about anything. Yep. I will then do I for detail. Oh, no. No, no. Because there's no bonus on it. Bah! Oh, so you can even play that. Uh, can you play that as your first card? No, because it I won't get that bonus off it. I need to have a uh, caution lined up. So hold on. Hey, uh, hold hey, on, you. hold on. Let me see this one. I could pay this one. Does nothing. Uh -huh. And then on the enemy, for every time it goes down, it goes up instead. But then I discard this after they go. Then, uh, you can't play that. So I'll just play that. But could you not pay a charge and draw two cards? But this goes down again. I don't want to keep doing that right now. Mm. I'm good. I'll play this card and just stop. So now every when the enemy goes, for every time it goes down, it goes up instead. It goes to him. Oh, sorry. Uh, I discard down to three. Draw a card. Did I not do that? I think I forgot to do that. No, I did. No, I did. You drew. I drew. Okay. Did, no. I think I forgot his turn. No, am I still on the first? Or no? No, I'm not. Yeah, you you are because didn't you do... Oh, yes, cause you, I drew this. Yeah. I can't play this. I can't play this. Why? Because I'm still on my first turn and I'm trying to play extra cards for the bonus. Yeah, I drew off of this. That's why I'm confused. I felt like I ended a turn. So to keep going... Oh, I see, I see. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. yes, yes. It's getting late. Yes, I know. <laughs> So if I play this one, I connect the bonus thing, I can keep going. Yes. Flash of Insight. Uh, I'm not going to pay the magic to draw an extra card. This says if this gets discarded, it bumps down and I draw another card. Then I can't play Eye for Detail. But I can play this one. Mm -hmm. And that connects because of the bonus off of Caution. And I'm not going to do that. But now it's set up. So now I'll end. Discard down to three. I have one. I'll draw. Go to his turn. He's going to try to move me down two. But right now it says for every one that goes down, it goes up instead. Bang, bang. And then after his response. But when his response, it actually says enemy response. Resolve the response on the encounter card that matches the current stage. Then perform the affinity check. So this would get discarded, whatever. But then... I check and I'm good. <laughs> I can't stop watching. <laughs> 5 a.m. You are crazy. Oh, man. Hopefully you don't have to work in the morning. All right. So that is that. He's defeated. So I get one rep. Nice. One rep and two wealth. Cha-ching. Wow. Whoops. That's Whoops. juicy. Yes, very juicy. So I don't need to go get all the wealth like I was talking about before. I can get it just by going to this. Uh, so that blue encounter will go on the bottom. Okay. okay, he's gone. Then all these will get discarded, uh, thrown back in my deck with all the ones from my hand. And okay. Tony's probably going to head out soon, he says. Yeah, this is definitely taking longer than I thought. Yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah, but if you're playing solo, I'm assuming this will go a lot quicker. And obviously, if you're not doing it on a live stream and talking every explanation out like I am, it would go a lot quicker. But like I said, this is more of a relaxed, casual start to the campaign. Eventually, when we get to like chapter two, three, four, whatever, we're going to just assume you know by now if you're following along. And some of you will have the game already. Some people have read through the rules PDF. Uh, then we're going to go a lot quicker in future episodes for sure. But it's just because the first one, Mel's learning, I'm learning, we're all learning. So I figure I'd take it a little slow and explain everything. And obviously, you do not have to watch this all in one sitting. I never expect that. Thankfully, YouTube can remember where you are in the episode. So they're saying, wasn't that a two-phase encounter? Does that mean you have to do both? It said or, though. No, no, no. It was an or. It was it an was or. blue. Blue. Uh, whoops. It was an or. 
right there. You do one or the other, they're both named number one. So there's no number two level to go to. So you either reveal the forgery or trick the trickster. Okay, let me see another example. Right here, this one has one and then two, where you work your way down. There's no or. Okay. That's, that's how I'm saying that's going. Uh, but anyways, yeah. Okay, perfect. Yeah, when I saw one and one, and I'm thinking like, I can't progress on it, so I'll, and there's an or, so I would assume it's just one choice. And it's only level two. Is it not a choice? Not a choice. It's an or, so you pick one. Yeah, that's yeah, what yeah, we yeah, would yeah. think, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's ones that are stage one, two, and three and stuff, right? So. Okay. Yeah. You're good? Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, I got all my stuff. Um, sure. And okay. I, I'm going to spend no more energy this day anyway, so. Um. Okay. So, um, I will spend, this has been a wealth too. I will spend an energy. I will go do the healing here. So it says pay one wealth, which I will do, and gain three health. One, two, three. Nice. Then, does this say... Right here, just, active quest. No, this one... Uh, your first travel today costs one less. Okay, so it didn't have to be your first action if it was travel. So now my travel will be free. I do not have to do that because you already did the encounter. That's perfect. Correct, once per day. I will then spend another energy to move here, which will then draw a blue encounter. I'm pretty sure. Because it doesn't say once per day. Yeah. Yeah, not once per day. Draw a blue encounter when you enter this location. Okay. Last resort. Here's another or. Here's another or. Talk them out or try to escape. So you can pick one where the wild card will move it up if you're empathetic or if you have caution. So in both cases, you're good. Okay. So then the bad guy every turn is going to be moving it down and discarding the last card you left there or moving it down and you're losing an energy. The reward is one experience, two rep. The failure, you lose one rep, take three damage, and lose three energy. Okay. Wow. I think I'll choose the top one because I don't want to lose energy and then possibly lose. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. So I'll do the top one. Top there's four green you're trying to get up to. Uh, let's throw a red cube on there starting in the gray, and it's the same thing as me. Two will fail you, so you gotta got to be careful. All right, I don't remember if I shuffle. Just, yeah, so I'm just, just going to shuffle it's really good. quick just in case. I don't even think I did a blue encounter yet. Oop. Okay. So, drawing my three cards. One, two, and three. All right. So... Looking at this. Yeah, there's that uh, rhetoric. So for every one, they move it down. It goes up instead, the one that I had. Mm -hmm. Just looking at any arrows. So there's on the that cards, wild card. Not... So that could move it up for you as long as you're connecting, uh, as long as you have, which you do, you have spirituality. Yeah. Okay. And... Or empathy, sorry. Empathy. Yeah, empathy, sorry. Okay, so just trying to think. Okay, two charges. Pay one charge to prevent one going down. Pay sorry. Pay one charge to prevent one going down. Pay two charges Thank and you. two energy. Uh, end this encounter without a reward or failure. That sounds like no fun. It's like a runaway, right? You can get an experience and two rep from it. I know. Um, gain two charges. I can pay one charge to prevent it from being, being discarded, which is yeah. Good. So when you play it, you put two on it. And then you'd have to end your turn and leave this. Oh, no, actually, it never gets covered up. Yeah, because yeah. you keep building. Okay, That's so I cool think to protect I'm going to put this one down first. Okay. Um, uh, so starting from the top, um, I have caution. You don't have two, though, right? Isn't that two there? Oh, it is two. You're right. You're right. So I wouldn't do that. But does that matter? Do you care? Does it make a connection to something else you want to play? You might have to put it down, right? Yeah, you got to play something. If you don't, he's going to do the... Uh, yeah, no, it's fine. Okay. Yeah, what does he do if you don't play a card in a, in a diplomacy? Do 
it just fail? Sorry, I don't know. But I'm just reading that while you do that. Oh, we can play it as a party. Uh, true. That. Totally forgot true. we can do that. True. Yeah, let's do so, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do it for fun. Cards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's. Okay. So, yeah, uh, so let's shuffle. experience the whole game here. Yeah, let's do. <laughs> Pretty sure. Yeah, thanks, Tony. <laughs> yes, thank you so much, guys. We're. Uh, one, two, three. Okay. Oh, and I also could mulligan, I guess. So, who do we pick as the active player? That's the question. Oh, we can look at our cards and see, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. I, yeah, uh, you draw cards first. So draw three cards from the opponent's deck. If four party members, you only draw two. Now we do pick, pick the active player. So uh, what does he got down there? Well, I, I mean, I have spirituality, but I only have one caution, so that doesn't connect for me. And I don't have empathy, so this whole thing I can't even connect to that. But that's fine. But I might be able to line you up for something. Oh, I gained some terror. Do you have two of anything? What do you mean? Oh, spirituality you have. Yeah, like yeah. I could line something up okay. where you need two spirituality. I could get a card draw off that and bump it up one and then place two charges, which could then... Uh, oh, but then if a card gets discarded, I gain a terror. So that's okay. But then I, I can cover that up. Um... Oh, I have the one that goes down, so I have to, like, put that with a negative. I can go first and do Intimidating Magic, where I make it go up one. Then I can connect Commanding Tone and ignore the down one. Then I oh, can do yeah. the whole Gain Two Charges thing where we could move it down to draw cards. Okay. And then I can... Holy. I don't need to do this. It would cost me a Magic, so I probably wouldn't. But I would line up the gain charges thing and probably just pass there. Okay. But then he would go, oh, we pick this. Well, no, we can change it now that yeah, you're playing yeah. it too. I just don't have empathy. So if I ever get that symbol, I can never move it up with it. This is not the worst, but at least this bottom one, we can both do it. The only problem is losing energy. I don't want to lose a single energy, and that will happen every time the enemy goes after I go. But if we can end it by you doing some stuff, then you lose an energy. That's fine, right? You still have energy? Yeah, yeah. Then when it goes to me, I have to like end it on my turn or find a way to block him from doing that, which I don't see that in my cards. So I, I st think we still go for the top one to be safe because I'd rather him discard cards from our chain than... We lose energy. Yeah, okay, okay. And you want to go first? Uh, Sure, I can. If you go first, I might be able to just end on this. Uh, okay, hold on. So what am I trying to connect you on? You well, this just... could be my first one, and it wouldn't matter, right? Correct. But then you stop on that. Yeah, but then if I stop, it might... But then all that does is when he moves it down, it goes up one. But depending on where you are. Oh, he moves it down one. No, for every time he moves it down one, it goes up one. But he only moves it down once. Right, but if we were already at... It could yeah, be, if, if you we could got get close. it up three. But I can... I don't know how many you're doing uh, here. One. I can get it up two. But I'd have to pay a magic to do this one. I don't know if I want to do that, but... Okay, then you don't have to do that. But I can draw cards and do the whole move it down thing and draw cards and get risky. But yeah, let me do that. Let me go first, see what happens. Okay. All right. So let's do Intimidating Magic. So I'm going to play this. And I'm going to go down here and I'll just bump it up one. Okay, with this free one. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then because I played it, I gain a terror. Because magic's so oh, intimidating. Oh, it's immediate. Yep. Then I'm going to play a Commanding Tone. The only problem is he's going to go and discard this. Because that's what he does, unless I draw something cool. So I'm going to play this because the bonus connects up on spirituality I have. Then I go down here. Then I go down here. It doesn't move down because it's blocked. Now I gain two charges. Now I will pay a charge to put us back to the gray. And I'll draw two cards. Okay. And I do have a question. Yep. 
Can I use my helmet on your turn? In combat or diplomacy, flip this card to prevent I, I don't know. I'm it not being sure. discarded? I don't think so. Or do these have to be played only on I think on it's my on your head. Action? So I think it's only when the active player is going. Okay. It would make more thematic sense, too, that you can't just... Here, throw this helmet on. It's okay. like really probably only protecting you, right? Okay. Okay. Um, so now, yeah, uh, I got two holy verses. Heroic presence. Oh, heroic presence. What did I just drew? I think these two. I could be wrong, but anyways. Um, so I can play this here. But you'd have to pay. Uh, I'd have to pay a magic. The other two aren't bonus cards. Mm. Okay, let's get risky. He's going to discard that anyway. How much magic do we need for this, this men here we're on again? For Sorry. 106? Three total, right? Uh... Two, because this one's no magic, so we would just be paying the no, magic. No, no, it is. We're in the whitening, right? Yeah, 106? Uh, no, we're in 107. Oh, excuse me, sorry. 107 is one magic each. But then one but extra then, from your curse. So, it's so we still need three. So I can't be willy-nilly and waste magic. Uh, so that draw kind of sucked. Yeah, I'll just stop there. But is that going to be bad because you won't be able to connect anything in? Can you still connect anything? Oh, the first card you can play no matter what. So mm -hmm. you can start building your own stuff. But I have did nothing really. I only got them on gray. And I drew some good cards to like start with next turn, I think. But mm. I could do that and go down one. But then if I get nothing to move it up, we lose. Because it would get to this turn and you bump it down to red. So I can't risk it. I'm going to end there. And I will discard down to three, but I already have three. I'll draw one. So we have backtrack. Uh, if affinity's not green, it can go up. Well, that's kind of cool from playing that one. But anyways, uh, okay, so he'll go. He's going to move it down one, and he'll discard this card. And I will go in my discard pile. Sure. Okay. So... So you can get it up. You just have to get it up one. You have to have to get it up one or we lose. Or do this thing. <laughs> and by minimum, you have to do this one to block him from moving down. And it would go up at least. Mm -hmm. That doesn't work. Well, no, it does. Because your first one is free. Go I next. know, but I was looking to line up that. But oh, I, sometimes whatever. I'm just trying to find where things are. Um... It does go in order based on what is on your mat here. So the lower it is, you know, it connects to spirituality. Is You're probably not going to be able to do it. So. But that's good for me. Okay. It actually be very good for me. Look at all these spirituality ones that connect good. I know. I but. think I'm going to play this one first for free because I don't want to pay any magic or okay. anything. Doesn't so do that's anything. just free. Now we gain two gain charges. Gain two charges. And we can pay one of them to prevent a discard. Oh, cool. So I can stop him from blowing it up. Blowing whatever up. Mm -hmm. And now... What can you play? Let's see. I just want to see something for one sec. If I did that. Um, caution. Caution, yeah. Okay, so I can do that. So I can connect that with that. Okay, uh, so you, do you have you have caution. I have so then caution. you do this. Do you have empathy? Yes. So then it goes up one. Okay. And then gain two charges, and we can pay to prevent it from going down. What? Oh, you can pay it from... Oh, nice. Pay one charge, prevent one, it moving down. Yeah, and then pay, pay two. Pay two and two energy to end this encounter with no reward or failure. Yeah, okay. Okay, and then I could do this because I have caution. I'm not going to pay a magic. And I'll end my turn there. So now for every time it goes down, and then you discard that after his turn. Okay. Okay. So now discard down to three. Don't Draw a diplomacy card. Okay. Now he will go uh, and bump it down. But every time it goes down, it's going to go up instead. Mm -hmm. So we're in the green. Okay. And then he'll go to discard. Um, but it uh, would just. But I know I'll pay. No, just 
But what? can can you oh, you, you can line that, that up, right? Because you have two. Sure. So, so I can just pay yep. one to prevent it. Okay. Are we going off camera or anything? Or are we still good? Oh, whatever. Okay. I think we're okay. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay. Um, oh wow. Is our methods? Oh yeah. Oh, that would be good connecting to that one. Yeah, I know, right? But you could only do it for the top two, but that would still go up twice. We need to go up three. So let me see what I can do here. Let me play one of these ones that doesn't have a bonus card on it, the Holy Verses, to get us started, I think. Uh, yes. Okay. So we'll connect there. Okay. I'll draw a card because I have caution. Okay, next. Uh, I have two spirituality. Yep. But I'll do that, but I don't have empathy, so it doesn't do that. Oh, okay. Okay, then we go down here one time, so move it up. So two more. Okay, then when I played it, if affinity is not green, but it is, it would go up. And then if this gets discarded, uh, the active player would get a terror. Okay. And what do we got to connect? We have caution and spirituality. I can connect over there or the free one. So not this one. Doesn't work. This one could work. Backtrack down. If affinity is not green, up one. And then... Or this one and it says ignore all enemies all going down then you discard it after it's a staunch defense so my only options are these two so I'm just looking that would give us three if you play that one yeah. and end okay so I'll connect this key here the free key for the bonus does nothing else oh, if affinity is not green it goes up but it doesn't that's fine okay and I'll end my turn, check in my cards, discard down to three, draw one. And then this guy will go. So I'll pay one to prevent it from going down? Uh, yep. Okay. And then he'll go to discard. And I'll prevent it from being discarded? Okay, yep. Okay. And then I'll go and I'll play this one. So I have empathy. And caution. Oh, and caution. I don't have spirit. Oh, we only need two. Yep. Okay, good. Because so, I'm like, I don't so have spirituality. You'll do, you'll do the uh, wild guard ability there, whatever it's called. Yep. And the variable power one up there, and then uh, and toss a to dial. This. Yeah. Skull, I lose one rep, and then uh, the other. Grail, nothing happens. I'm not good at this. Well, you're going to get good because we're going to be tossing dials That's for me. 30 to 40 hours of this Whoa. game. It's a skull. <laughs> oh, so I lose one rep. Okay. Well, it was worth it. Uh, okay. So now we. So we win. So reward, we both get it. Uh, is each one experience and two rep. Oh, one experience and two rep. But if it was loot, we would only get one to share. Oh, but because it's a reward? Uh, two rep. Yeah, rewards okay. you, you all, the party gets, but loot, it's just uh, just one to share. Okay. Same with the exploration journal. So all now, all of that, that's wording reward is always the whole party. So now this is a silly question, but how do we determine whose cards are who? You got to see in the bottom right, see the color. Uh, there's blue and then there's the whatever brown is symbol or whatever. B might be brown. I don't know. I need B cards. Give me Bs. There you go. Thank you. No problem. I know the reason why we should sleeve them in different colored sleeves versus the clear, but... Okay. I figure for the first couple episodes, we kind of show everything as it is and use clear sleeves. But uh, So this guy goes to the bottom of his blue deck here. Beauty. Okay. All right. So now you're sitting in, in whitening with four energy left. Yeah. Is it men here time for free? Which I could do for free too. It doesn't yeah. matter because it's free. Well, let's do it. In I case it tells rested. us In case it tells us what to do, we have to do something else and I can go and do something else. Perfect. Okay. So we're going to do the men here thing on there. Yes. Which the men here for 107. Seven. Oh, you don't have the energy. So we can't do it yet. What is it? How much? Three. Okay. Unless you so said, oh, you, oh, you can't. We could just rest. Oh, I can I s do energy for you? One, two, three. And we I can only do have three each. I can do one for you. So you're saying we just exhausted it? We can wait till tomorrow. Okay, let's wait till tomorrow. <laughs> you're right. You're right. All right. Do you want to do any? You want to trade with the townsfolk? Pay a food to gain a wealth? Uh, well, I'm gonna do. 
this. Oh, yeah, yeah. You're, so I'm going to spend an energy. Okay. I can gain one wealth for each uh, practicality, and I have one. Okay. Oh, that's not the right color. So I gain one wealth, and then discard that. So in settlements, yep, you can discard the petty trinkets. Okay. All right, they're gone. So I have one more I could, but we've already explored that fully or no? I don't know. Okay, well, let's explore just in case, yes. Uh, just in I case, it I... could be bad. Oh. All right, what is it, 107? Yeah, I can't remember if we did it all. All right, start checking our little save sheet. Yep. Do we have Fails Legacy? Fails Legacy, no. Uh, we don't have the Winds of Weirdness. No. Uh, and we're not playing Ailey. Go to verse 7. If you have more than two rep, go to verse 12. You do. Yep, I have three. All right. See, these are the kind of notes we needed to take last time was, like, okay, we need to go back to 107 with more rep. Right. Stuff like that. Now that I yeah. have played it, I, I will know in the future what I'm doing. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, sorry, where was it going? Oh, I'm up here. Uh, verse 12. Okay. So, uh, I'm going to go to verse 12, otherwise 11. No, 12. Ask the people to help you on your journey. Gather the white lichen, which, yeah, we know what that's all about. Or inquire about acolyte, blah, 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 but requires part one of the Garant's successor status. Do you have that? Or leave. So you can ask the people to help you on your journey if you want. Sure. Four. Verse four. Sum up food and wealth of all party members. So, Roll a die. So what's our food and wealth? So uh, three for me. Four for me. So seven? Yeah. Okay. Roll a die. Four. four. Okay. Okay. If you own more than three wealth and three food, add plus one. Each? I think total. Yeah, I'd be totaling it up, right? Okay. Which we do, right? Yes. Yes. More than three food and oh, three... Oh, three food each? and three wealth. No, we don't. Okay, so no. No, so we don't add one. If you have fewer than three wealth or fewer than three food, add plus three. We have fewer than three food, so yeah. we're adding plus three, so it's at seven. Okay. If you have fewer than two wealth and fewer than two food, add plus six, which we don't. Right. So we're at seven. So we're tied. Now check a result in verse nine. What the heck? So on six to seven... The people of whitening shun you. Exploration ends. <laughs> what? <laughs> so did we need more? I'm not even going to read the other things that could have happened. I'm just done. That's awesome. Do we need more? So you play a little mini game like, no, you know we why it was? Less. Yes, we're asking for help, but no, we we're, ha we're rich. We're walking around with gold chains and like eating chicken wings. And we're like, yo, you got any food or money? And they're like, <laughs> get out of here, you bums. <laughs> and they're like, they like only have like little breadcrumbs and they're eating that. And they're like, what? You want some breadcrumbs? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You're too rich. <laughs> oh, this game. Wow. Oh, man. Okay. Okay. So I'm done. Yes. <laughs> wow. Oh, man. Okay. This game's driving me crazy. Like, I love it. I feel like I'm my character. I'm like getting tired. I'm going loopy. <laughs> the game's like slapping me around. I love it. Okay. Okay. So we're going to rest? Correct. Done. I am done. We're resting. So you want to eat some food? I'm going to eat some food. Yeah, it's my last one. Unless we need food for our menu. Oh, shoot. I need you uh, to be on this. What, what do you got? 107. Uh, no food. No food. Okay. No so food. I'm eating food. Yeah, me too. Healing one. Losing paper. a terror. Okay, you got so. No terror. Uh, you already healed. No, okay. I'm good. I'm good. So restore your energy to full. Perfect. One up to six. Six. Uh, advance your character by spending XP. Oh, I have two now. You could look at combat cards and upgrade. I'm going to wait. Yeah, let's wait after this minure. Because what lighting. I'm saving up for, I could. Here's what I've been thinking about. Oh, man, which card is it on? Okay, so you could do 2 XP to draw 3 combat or diplomacy cards from your advancement pool. Choose one and put the rest back and shuffle the pool, which I won't do right now. Or you could do 2 experience to do the first 1 point in one of an attribute pair. But the problem is I have all my pairs have something in it. So 4 XP to do the second point. So if I want to do 1 Empathy, which I'm feeling like I want, I have to spend at least 4 XP to get that because I already have 1 Aggression. Or I'm also looking at Practicality because I felt like a lot of my combat cards had practical connections that I don't even have at all. Uh, unless I start tweaking, like I could spend XP and start putting cards in my deck and taking those out. 
but there were so many that I feel like it would take forever. I'd rather just try to get a practicality, which could help in anything we do. Yeah. Like we saw in that diplomacy, if you have certain yes. certain uh, things. I don't have empathy. I'd love to get an empathy, but I mean, that could also make me, when we were shoveling dead bodies, that could make me get more terror because I'm empathetic. Yeah. But, I, I, you know, that's a risk. But I, I would like to make my character a little more generic in stats a little bit before I start really going heavy in one thing. Um, so that I'm saving up my XP to eventually hopefully get to either four XP or six XP to do a practicality or empathy. That's my, what my yeah. decision is there. Okay. I'm just saving wanna, for now. Yeah. You don't, you don't yeah. Want because it. if I wouldn't do anything, I would probably want to at need, least need four, I need for four, that. four for that. I don't want any cards right now because I don't even really know. You need know four what's... for anything because yeah. at least these, you have two already. So you need six to get yeah. anything in these pairs. But no, I think I'm fine. Right I feel now. like I'm not familiar enough with my diplomacy and my combat deck yet, but I bet there is some super powerful stuff in the advanced pool and stuff tweaked more towards my character that would, based on the rule book, even hinting like you can get more cards that'll make you have a better chance of winning and living and surviving and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and the chat is saying you could get a skill under spirituality. Yeah, true. I am doubled up, but that would cost me uh, six. So that's risky. Yeah, if I, if I choose to do six to get my practicality, then it's going to cost me eight to get my first skill in spirituality. Ah. So I could go very heavy on spirituality and go nuts, get skill cards coming out the side, have tons of it. But I feel like I've seen cards where I'm like, oh, I could have connected this bonus if I just had a practicality or if I had an empathy. I'd rather it make the combat cards I have now like sing more together and work together. Mm -hmm. that makes That's sense. what I'm thinking. But that could be a, a hindrance or a help in the exploration journal or not. But we'll see. That's what I'm thinking. But I'm going to save my XP now and just try to keep seeing if I can get more. Hopefully I don't lose any. That would be that would suck. Um, so we're not modifying decks. Dream time. Is there a dream lo location there? There is. There is. So you have to flip. I'll flip. See what we get. Uh, I'm good for the dream. Okay. So, so we don't have to read the nightmare. One? 107. Yep. Not sure if we did this one already. I think we did. It was like dreaming about being away from home. I think I was there already. Yeah. Uh, your dream of home is understandable considering for the first time you're in your life. You've wandered so far from it, but why is everyone talking and walking backward? Okay. Does the third point in a pair cost six? Yes. Yes, it does. Right here. So first point, or sorry, that's cards. First point is two, second point is four, third point is six, fourth point is eight, and fifth and further costs 10. So it never goes above 10, but 10 is super crazy. I'm curious if like your XP goes up as you start playing the game and fighting bigger things. Maybe you get more XP that way. But I got XP out of here. I don't. I got, and we got XP from encounters. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. So any more end of day? No. No. So now start a day. No menus are inactive, but we're gonna remove time tokens. We're gonna tick this thing down to one. My lichen, my pale crystals. Mm-hmm. And we're gonna check this guy down to three. Okay. Three. Yeah. Three. Okay. Time's flying. Um, move guardians, pick your items. Nope, we're good. Okay. We are good. So let's do that activation then. Yes. Let's, that's free, right? Uh, it's free to do it, but then you got to pay the cost. We're both there. Yeah. So let's see. So zero energy to activate it, but requires all characters and the mini right secret card, which we have. Okay. Pay three energy. One, one, two, two. three. This is each. Okay. One health. Down one to health. six. Okay. One wealth. Okay. And then because you have that extra magic cost, we're doing one magic each, but you have to do an extra. I have to do an extra? But I'll pay it for you. Oh, okay. Okay, get it? Yep. So. Spent. So no magic anymore. We don't have any. Okay. Um, but I'll use probably some energy to try to get some right now. And then it says, we're going to put a new menu model on this location. It says it's dialed to nine minus one per player. Ooh. Uh, this one. Tony is off. He's <laughs> out of here. Thank you, Tony, for Thank helping so us much. out. We appreciate it for Thank spending for time with us. Thank you for being here. <laughs> Sorry it went a lot longer than we yeah. anticipated. We're going to do the next one earlier, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I set it to seven. Nine minus one per player. Okay. Okay. Now we're going to put 117. Oh yeah, because now we can see. 117 is the first farm hold. 
you can rest there or uh, dream there. It says put a purple encounter when you enter this location or draw a purple encounter once per day as the lightning bolt action thing. The first foothold of Avalon's Conqueror is now ruined in a banyan, just like it's many years. <laughs> cool. So that goes connected to 107. And the top one was 114. Oops, went too far. Tangle Root. Uh, Tangle Root, you can dream there. Uh, you can spend two to gather food, gain two food, and draw green encounters, similar to the Hunter's Grove. And for many years, travelers worked to turn this overgrown gorge into a trail. Despite their efforts, it's still a confusing maze. Cool. Okay. So that's done. Now we're going to read our quest. Oh, yep, because we got it. Because we activated a menu. One oh, of we did not flip an event. Oh, thank you. Good weather. Your first travel okay. costs one less. All okay, right, we're good. perfect. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, wow. Reveal next event. Yeah, I missed that. Sorry. Nope, that's okay. Uh, I was just excited to do this. <laughs> All right, success. When you activate one of the menus, resolve the chapter one part six card of the event deck, then discard this card. One part six. End. Oh. <laughs> Congratulations. You completed your first chapter of the Fall of the Avalon campaign. Each character gains two experience and one magic. Yeah. Oh, it knew. One. It knew. You were going to spend magic, so. And Tony just left. He just missed it. <laughs> Did you turn the secret dial? Yeah, we, yes, did. we did. It's we down did. to one. Yeah, yeah, it's down to one. Uh, okay. Yeah, we remember that, but I totally forgot the event card, <laughs> even though we've done that so many times. <laughs> All right. We were excited to do the minion. Yeah, yeah. Each character gains one free combat deck advancement. So let's do that. Oh, so you can so, take your card? Yep, go to your advancement cards. Okay. And with their shuffles, just take the top three. All right. One, two, three. Then you look at them and you choose one to add to your pool and you could add it like right to your deck if you want. So we'll do one set at a time. Sure. So I got Maggot's Blood Magic, which has nothing down on the free key. You can draw a card on magic and it connects as like a bonus. When you play it, I lose a health, but I gain three charges as a passive one. You can use these charges as magic during the encounter. Oh, that's powerful. Oh, that's powerful. Okay. Wow. In, ingenious Trap. Uh, looks like I can set up some double aggression and some double, um, which none of us really have any of that, so that's not the greatest. Ingenious Trap uh, connects for a red cube automatically, and then when you play it, you gain a cube for each uh, practicality. Another practicality that I don't have. Another reason why I want to get it. Or Maggot's Death Magic. So on aggression, I get a red cube, but I can bonus connect it on magic. I get a red cube on the free, and when I play it, you may take a terror and pay one magic to gain two red cubes, and then I put a time token on it, so this is still sitting out there, and the next gains person two. gains two more. Wow. Ooh, 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 ooh. I feel like this is less situational because three charges, and I can spend them as magic, can connect a whole bunch of cards that it could never connect before, and I don't have to waste magic. So I feel like blood That's magic. That's pretty good. But the only now, thing on the other side, I have aggression, but I don't have two courage, and neither do you, so no. that connection. But it just has the one times free and an aggression, so yeah, it's not the still, worst. this alone is going to Yeah, be... I'm going to take blood magic. Now, so the two that you don't put in, do they go They go shuffled back, oh, yeah, okay, they get okay. shuffled back in. So yes, you may see them next time. I wasn't sure if they go on the top, so then you're drawing no, three, so you draw no, no, those no. two plus one more. And they don't go to the bottom, they actually get shuffled. So I'll shuffle that while you um, talk about what you got and figure out what you're going to pick. Okay, so let's do one at a time like this. Okay, so how do we say his name? Arev? I don't know. Sure. However you want to say it. He's your, uh, he's your character. You say the name how you want. Scythe pull. So place a charge on the sewing card. I guess. What? Choosing. Oh, I think that's. Oh, okay. That's this one. That's funny. Oh, it's that's funny cool. that the they, rest they place referencing... cards on others. Okay, so let's do this one first then. <laughs> that's cool. So let's there's combos. One. Combos going. Okay, so um, place three charges on this card or one charge on any card in the sequence and then discard. Place three charges on this card or one charge on any card in the sequence and discard. Uh, you discard this. Oh, okay. So you play it. Place three charges on this card or one charge on any other card but then this goes away oh so i could technically put a charge if we were together on your magic card yep 
Okay, okay, okay. And then that one was then letting me place a charge card on this card. So there's no way you'll get both of these right now, and you may no. it may take forever to see both those together. So I would pick whatever's less situational right now. Okay. For a sense of planning, uh, each so party member draws one card. You'd always have to start with this one. Each party member draws an extra card in the draw card step. Super powerful. And then you line up courage and practicality. Or, uh, yeah, courage. I have. You have practicality and courage. Mm -hmm. And then it's a two timeser. Mm -hmm. And it stays Three out. Three times. Listen, this stays out until it gets covered okay, so up. Each round. That yeah, that's be. that's busted. A, I like this one. This is a three time. <laughs> Three times, sir. Yeah, but... Okay, I think you're right. I think drawing <laughs> the cards at this point of yes, where we are is like good. like of the cards, like of the cards. So I will take that and I will shuffle like these the back and I do. <laughs> you like of the juice? <laughs> okay, so you just shuffle these back in? Yep, but we can do that after. That's fine. Yeah. Uh, all right, so then I'll it says that. discard your event deck, place any discarded... Uh, random event cards back in the random event deck. Shuffle this deck. Then either save your game or draw a chapter two setup card and follow its instructions to begin the next chapter. Well, that sounds like we're going to wrap it up here. We won't do all that cleanup for you guys. We'll obviously let you go. Thank you for being here. Patrick, thanks for joining Hello. us. You have came right in time to watch us end the stream. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a very strong card. Drawing cards in a passive just sitting out there. We'll see how that works. So yeah. stay tuned to see how these new cards make our decks ballin'. If we ever see them, because remember, you only draw so many. That's true. And then you shuffle it up again. So you may not see them for a while, but you might see it every time. You never know. That's true. So that's what you're mulligan for now. Now yeah, you know you got something to mulligan for. Yeah, once you know what's in your... Yep. You could also take out a card to put it in to increase your odds of seeing it. I might just add it in, because there's that whole like life mechanic of if you run out of cards, you go to draw from your deck and there's none left, you automatically have to escape. Yeah. And you would fail if you're by yourself. Yeah. Uh, on diplomacy, but on combat, whatever. So I might try to make my cards... Uh, or my deck a little bigger just for survivability, but I do like the whole idea of keeping it at 15 and keeping it efficient from playing deck building card games and stuff, like obviously. Yeah. But yeah, that's going to be it um, for this playthrough. Thanks for watching to chapter, end of chapter one here. Hopefully that wasn't too bad spoilery. There was a lot we did not see. Yeah. We did not get this location. We didn't explore here. We didn't explore we here. We didn't explore here. There was probably stuff in the exploring of the places we explored that we didn't get through through other verses. Yeah. There is other um, statuses that we could have gone or not gotten. Like, crazy. But I think we're going to leave this on the table. Uh, I don't know how I'm going to do this. So, just for my clarification, the stuff that we have here, does this stay to the next... Uh, yes. Plus, so get the save sheet that we have. Yeah. Well, we can do all that after. But no, I, I want to see oh, it, though. I just want to see it. So right here. I was here, just curious. Yes. You're writing in numbers in there. And you're writing in where your tracks are at. You're writing where your attributes are. Okay. You're writing the location you're on. Any dial stuff you have, you're writing it in there. And any notes. So my cards will stay that I yep. don't use. Oh, yep. Okay. There's even save slots in the insert of the box where you can just drop all your stuff in, basically. Okay. Like all your decks and stuff. And that's what these little... Um, divider cards are for and there's ones for dividing our save locations our current encounters you just place them in the way they are mm -hmm. and we literally continue like that unless setup 2 tells us to break these up and whatever and then when we play again do we still start with these or no, no this is no, now no, no. done that, and you now, never need to flip that again now this is where we're at okay yeah. interesting okay I'm pretty sure that's how it works you just campaign on you just continue how you are interesting yep okay so that's why I said when you're picking your character earlier, don't worry about this because it changes as soon as you start going. You start losing yeah. and gaining and stuff. So literally these starting things don't really matter too much, I don't think. It's really more about this and more about your attributes. And even your deck, you're not even getting your own cards yet. You're literally just using the generic deck of 15 cards I think yeah, that we all have. This is the first one. That's my own yeah. specific. Yep. Okay. Yep. That's cool. Very cool. Boom. This wow. game's awesome. Yes. I'm sure you're all excited. I see good stuff. Can't wait to get my copy. Good run. A new day is dawning here in Finland soon. 6 a.m. Oh, my goodness. Oh, no. I'm so sorry. He did say that so he's missed. off today. So okay. that's good. Yeah, go get some sleep. <laughs> and uh, in, I don't know, in like 13 or 14 hours, I'll be probably playing some Too Many Bones live stream I have scheduled on Halloween. Yep. I'm probably going to be playing with patches. We got a Halloween promo oh, patches yes, yes, cool. token. I'll be playing uh, some solo patches, I think. Maybe I might try two gear locks, but I'll decide in the morning uh, if I have the time to kind of figure out what I'm going to play with. But yeah, too many bones live stream happening tomorrow. We are going to continue with our playthrough of this, most likely on Friday. 
Not sure if it'll be alive, but stick around to the channel. Make sure to subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss when I schedule a new live stream. Uh, you'll see it on the channel. I'll schedule it probably tomorrow. And I'll tweet about it. So follow on Twitter and Facebook. The other social media links are down below. Thank you to everyone that supports us on Patreon. Thank you to Awaken Realms for providing this review copy for us to play through here. Uh, to have some fun with it on the channel. We appreciate that. Thank you everyone for spending time watching this and sitting here through us. Whether you're here on the live stream with us in the chat or whether you're watching this in the future, thank you for spending your time watching our videos. We do appreciate it greatly. And thank you for all your support. If you want to see more of this game and want to spread the word, hit that like button. Very important. It helps other people find this game on YouTube when they're searching for it. They'll find these videos. When they're searching board games, they'll find this video. It'll pop up more in the search results and they can find this game. Have some fun joining this channel and yeah, see this awesome game. I don't think they can get the game yet, but at some point, hopefully, the game will be more readily available. But yeah. Is it worth asking if people would watch if we continue doing live? Or is, is people kind of only watching the first one and then going to hang back until they get their copies? Because there's no sense of us doing live if nobody is... We'll see how Friday goes. We'll discuss okay. it tomorrow. Find out uh, if we have other people coming to play games on Friday or not. We may not do it. We may decide okay. the time if it doesn't work. We'll figure that but out I later. But in general, like the next... I think we might try the next one live, but then after that, maybe try some pre-recorded okay. just so then... Because what we like to do is, uh, as we get into the campaign, we might get like a Saturday where we actually have like the whole day and night free, and we'll hammer out 12 hours of gaming like with just food breaks in between, and literally we'll get through a whole bunch. So we'll record all those, and then I'll edit them, cut out like the slow parts, and kind of put a front and end. And Gesto211, thank you for the subscribe. Um, but yeah, we'll edit them up and then put them up in a playlist and everything. So all this stuff will be in a playlist. You can follow along there. But yeah, some of them we will just pre-record and put up. And you guys watch them whenever you want. Leave comments and that kind of stuff. Um, but we'll probably play the next one live. I think I want to try it because this was super fun. Yeah, this was very fun. Having everyone here. But I understand people don't want to watch and get too many spoilers going farther. So doing them live, I can understand we'll probably have less and less people joining us live to watch. So that also makes sense. So yeah, thanks a lot for being here. That's it. We'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Have a good night. Have a good morning, wherever you are. Thank you for being here. We appreciate your time.